What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Your boy Vin in the house. Ba -boom, ba -boom, ba -boom, ba -boom, ba -boom. Actually, let me see if uh, we're public yet. We're a publicly traded company. I'm here to solve laws all duels dust today. Uh, yeah, we're public. All right, we're good to go. We're good to go. We're good to go. Just wait for everybody to jump on. Long time no see. All that good jazz. <clears throat> Waiting for y'all to show up. And uh, 11 people in the house. Very good. Let me pull this chat up. Let me pull the chat up. Music fan in the house. Rich Yonkers in the house. All right, all my people are here. All my people are here. Mark in the house. Randy in the house. Randy Williamson. Uh, Re oh, Reverend Nadine. Reverend Nadine loves us. Thank you so much. Hola. O Overshadow Sean in the his house. Jambi in the his house. What's good, dog? <laughs> Jay Dispirited in the his house. What's good, Jay? Thanks for all your work and wonderful community building. Appreciate that, Rev. I appreciate you. Patty Diaz in the house. How you doing, homie? Goth mom in the house. What's up, Goth mom? Good to see you. Good to see you, sis. Hope everything's going well for you. Uh, the homies, the big homies, doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. What y'all on? What y'all doing? What are y'all doing? K Honda. I don't know what Honda means in um, Espanol, my guy. My B. Just finished watching the Nina Simone reaction from A99. Yeah, Kyrie, that one was crazy. Holy moly. Hey, Larry, man. Heard about your dad, bro. Um, much love to you, man. Randy, you're driving. Please be careful when you're driving, bro. I can't I can't deal with any bad news. And you're one of my guys. Like Onda, like what's up? Oh, okay, 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 okay. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> uh all right, good. I think he wants a car. Who wants a car? Oh, like K Honda? Costa Rica! Yo, I'm watching all the stuff for Amazon because we're about to la launch our Amazon company at some point. And um, uh, this girl, Perkinos in the house, this girl expatriated from um, Amer no Canada to Costa Rica. Like she's living in Costa Rica now. It's crazy. Hello from Greece. What's up? Yep, I'm happy and safe. Good to see y'all, you beautiful people. Just trying to figure this Amazon ish out, guys, and it's it's kind of strange. I gotta I gotta tell you. I gotta tell you, it's kind of weird. My partner was super stoked that you did more Fear Factory. Wanted to point out that Resurrection is the next song on the album, which you reacted to ages ago. Holy moly! That's true. Reva. Hello from Nepal. What's going on, Frost? <clears throat> Lisa Fernandez. Hola. There's a great interview on The Rebel with Tom McDonald. Interesting interview. Yeah, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. What's the subject, bro? No subject, man. I'm, I'm just, we're just chilling. Uh, somebody wants to bring up a subject. I'm down with the struggle. Let's talk about it. Talk about it. Talk about it. You know, when you know, you know. Gen G in the house. What's good, Gen G? What's up, my brother? Majestic Demon Lord. Holy shit. My man. How are you doing, bro? Majestic Demon Lord in the house. Have I ever talked to a deist? Yes, I have, Mark. Are you a deist? You want to talk? Have you ever seen American History X? Yes, I've seen American History X. It's been a while. Hell yeah, it's been a while, Majestic Demon Lord. How you doing, bro? One of the OGs in the fireside. What's up from Seattle? Hey, how you guys doing with that Russell Wilson situation? Or are you not a are you not a Russell Wilson person? Or are you not a sports person? But it's very interesting what's going down in Seattle. 
New corporate overlords and I'm working my ass off. Not much chance of chance. Yeah, bro. I know. Like, um, you know, I, I was working uh, in a regular corporate America job and um, <laughs> a couple, I was actually, you know, bouncing some ideas, a couple people on the channel actually, and sorry, obviously, and, and uh, I just pulled the trigger, man, and, and we're full-time YouTubers now and doing Amazon. So, I mean, it's, it's uh, the corporate world is, you know, definitely has its rewards for sure, but sometimes it can suck the life out of you. Hope you're doing good. My sis took my son to breakfast, first outing since COVID. He was good. Manners on point, so proud. Yeah, who says metalheads and goss can't raise the best kids in the world, huh? Flip back forth between agnosticism and deism. That's interesting, Mark. Do you want to um, jump on and have a conversation about it? Not necessarily a debate, but a exchange of ideas. That'd be kind of cool. This could get wild very fast. I'm an interface minister with the Universal Life Church. Oh, no doubt, Nadine. Sure, you're doing a lot of good in the world where you are. You filthy capitalist. <laughs> I'm a corporate whore. Good to hear you are keeping well, both of you and Sora. I hope the little ones aren't graying your hair too much. Nah, nah, the little ones aren't graying my hair. Not at all. Uh, next gen metalhead. Yeah, yeah. What's up, Alex? Any chance you guys will return to Lingua Ignota, or is it too emotionally heavy? I'm almost 95% certain that we've got a, a Lingota song, if I'm pronouncing it properly, like on the short, short, short list. Um, it was the, the, the song she wrote, the, song, the one song we did was extremely heavy and disturbing. Um, it's not me. It, it, I think I would describe that band as like a DMT trip. Like it's something kind of people talk about it being necessary that they had to do it and that they learn things about themselves, but it's not something that a lot of people like look forward to after they do it. Right. It's not like a recreational drug. And I think, uh, that band is kind of like that. So we're not going to never do those songs. We're going to, we're probably going to do a lot of those songs actually, because I, I respect the hell out of anybody that can make truly disturbing things without taking the cheap route. If that makes any sense. Like I was watching a show. Now I'm going to cough on this weird rant. I was watching a show and there was a particular scene and the scene was absolutely terrifying. Actually, I think I can actually show it to you guys. Um, the scene was terrifying. Um, but it was terrifying in a very creative way. And then I saw another movie. And we turned it off in the first five minutes. Somebody goes up and just starts stabbing this woman. And it's supposed to be terrifying, but it wasn't. It was just gross. Um, the other scene, though, was way more terrifying to me. But it was way more creative, too. So anyway, that's my take on uh, that band. Uh, great old one in the house. More than happy to jump on and have a conversation. Okay, Mark. So Mark, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test out our chat thingamajiggy. So copy link. Okay. So the link um, that I'm putting is for the big homie Mark. And um, that's for him. So please don't click on it. It's for it's for him. I actually host a mass on Mondays because I'm a weird one reclaiming Monday interfaith mass drawing primarily in Catholicism, Buddhism, neo-paganism, Taoism, but I'm a divine perennialist. Oh, that's cool. I don't know what a divine perennialist would be. So that would be interesting. My little ones are graying my head. <laughs> I bet they are. A lot of influential music that decade, so there was a lot of competition between songs that were important musically and songs that were important lyrically, and plenty of that were both. Yeah, uh, that that was a pretty deep song, pretty deep song, and and dealing with some real specific issues. For sure. The deism and Gnosticism conversation, I'd be more than happy to do so. Yeah, bro. So I, I got you that link. So if you click on that link, it should get you on, and you'd be on cam, and you'd be my guest, and all that good jazz. It'd be fun. Dude from Argentina. Hey, man. What's up, buddy? 
Good to see you, Shotgun. I, I believe that at the moment of Revelation, all religions were revealed by divine source to that person. It's a game of telephone that mucks things up. We're responsible for receiving. Oh, I think I got a, I, I think I have a caller. I think, although, did I hear that? Oh, it's the wrong guy. Holy moly. Hold on, guys. Uh, let me kill that one so that it only goes to me. I have Ecamm up on way too many pro programs. Maybe that's why it was uh, jazzing up a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to send it to you again, big homie. Hold on. Big homie Mark. <laughs> Yo, Thomas Sewell. What's up? What's up, Ben? <laughs> ben, uh, uh, I was about to uh, pin your comment. And then uh, you said the only good capitalist is a dead one. And obviously, I'm not going to uh, uh, post that. <laughs> but um, it was a very insightful comment. On a slight, uh, on a side note, when my beard in here does gray, it's going to go white. Then I could be either Santa Claus or a wizard. Yeah, you'd be Gandalf, bro. Or uh, was it Sauron? Is Sauron the bad guy? I replied to your comment about not pinning it. What did you say? Did you say something horrible and uncharitable like you usually do? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Majestic. Uh, ben was not calling me Tom, Thomas Soul as a, uh, as a uh, compliment, I can assure you. Yeah, Mark, uh, tr we're going to try it again, and this time I'm pretty sure it's going to work, inshallah, inshallah. I am the Pumpkin King. Boom! It was uncharitable, not that horrible, though. I remember he's our resident socialist, but I interpret it as a <laughs> as a compliment. <laughs> yeah, I bet you. I bet you. I bet you would. Yeah, majestic. Uh, ben is uh, the exact same person you were when you left him. He, he's he's the exact same guy. Ah, what's up, Doug? DJ in the house. DJ in the building. It's good to see you, big homie. What y'all? What you up to, bro? What you doing? Ah, salam alaikum. Al Shamiri. What's up, Al Shamiri? Do we have a resident anarchist or can I snap one up right now? Well, uh, Nadine, um, our resident anarchist, we've got a couple resident anarchists in the room, I think. Ben's here. That's my cue to exit. Good night, everyone. <laughs> ben, you, why are you so toxic, Ben? <laughs> Let's talk for a law. Let's talk for a law. Ben, make up with Jen, please. As in, apologize for your horrible treatment of her. Por favor. The problem with you, Ben, is you don't know when to turn it on and when to turn it off. And you you uh, you think everybody's me. Not everybody's me, little bro. I still love you, though. But you got a serious issue. Did you call me an Arab 100% when you learned of my name? Because I ain't. <laughs> can I sign up to be the resident capitalist? Yes, you can for a small fee. <laughs> then I did the math of scores on songs I've submitted. And I have an average score of 10.2 between yours and Sori's ratings. Lowest is 7.3, which is the only one below a 9. 7.11. 7.11s? Holy moly. Astaghfirullah. I stuck for a lot. What did I do? What did I do, Fahad? Do you believe in heaven and hell? Yes. Uh, uh, Majestic Demon Lord is our resident capitalist. Um, 
Uh, will you guys react to more Mick Gordon? Yes. For small fee. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sure we will. I thoroughly enjoyed that song. Please react to Motorhead 2. Good to be true. And Evan Essence, breathe no more. Much love to you guys. Love your content. You guys' passion for this channel. Keep up the good work. Yeah, man. We are... Uh, we, okay. Kill that link. Um, kill that link. Um... And I, I screwed up. So kill that link. Let me try again. I'm still figuring out the interview um, feature. So give me one second. I think I solved the problem, little homie. Give me one minute. Doing well. We finally found a house. Closed in a month. We're stoked to finally have a room for the six of us. That's great. Demons are very capitalistic. The trading of souls and all that. Do I get to be the resident social Democrat? You are the resident uh, almost Christian perk. <coughs> Who I go to for for a lot of my uh, confirmation of historical intel, which um, is may or may not be a compliment. <coughs> Cold slammer. Holy moly. This is like cheers. Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. Dum, dum, dum. And we're always glad you came. Anthony Kang in the house. Kang in the house. Shout out to all our patrons. Shout out to Anthony Kang. Uh, I that, that link, guys, is for Mark. If you want to come on and chat, that's cool. After um, after Mark, you'll be able to come on and chat, inshallah. You want to be where you can see. The troubles are all the same. You want to go where everybody knows your name. Boom, 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 boom. Russell will be Seattle's QB this year. Doesn't mean we'll have an offensive line, though. Definitely not winning the West this year. Nobody's winning anything because of Thomas Edward Patrick Brady. You know that. You know that. I'll gladly be the chief representative of cultural Christians. Do we own our souls to sell? Oh, rich yonkers. Da -doom, da -doom, da -doom, da -doom. Oh, oh we, we got it already. That was a good one, rich yonkers. I got to give that to you, big homie. Did you sing in the church choir as a kid? Hell no. I don't have a voice, bro. <clears throat> where's Johnny? I know, Johnny. Where's Johnny? Salaamu Alaikum. Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. When you and me die, what do we see? Uh, well, when I die, I'm going to see the face of Christ. When you die, inshallah, you'll see the same thing. Vince, sorry, I apologize for not understanding and knowing how to use Patreon. Anthony, that's nothing to apologize for because uh, I don't know how to use Patreon either. <laughs> so, not a, will the Buccaneers repeat? Of course they will. Of course they will. Graham Pierce Music. What's up, Graham Pierce? K Kanez, that's my guy. Vin, you do have a voice. Those dark days are over. Dun, dun, dun. Hello from Italy. What's up? What's up? How good of a guitarist are you? Uh, Fahad, I have to tell you uh, the truth. Um, I'm a I'm a two out of ten. You'll see, because we're actually releasing a uh, a music video pretty soon here. If my if my guitarist, if the lead guitarist of our band, can finally put his stuff together, that would be great. Are you fond of contemporary Christian music? I don't know how to answer that question without sounding like a dick. No, I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm not. Although we're going to be reviewing a song with a Satanist um, in a couple weeks. And uh, it's a Christian song that I love. So who knows? Now it's not working at all, you say. Hmm. Interview is on. Yeah. Let's see. Boop. All right. So somebody else click on that link. Um, because we're trying to test it and see what the problem is. 
Uh, Vin's uh, legendary technical prowess has once again uh, come to haunt the the beautiful people of the village, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm a Christian. It's rare to hear a good Christian song, sadly. Uh, imagine I listened to a daddy's song and felt the same feeling in 1996 when I was a schoolboy. I don't know English well. Hey, Phantom, are you talking about corns, daddy? That's a tough one. And Tester is a pretty, uh, particularly awesome. Yeah, uh, I, we were in a band. I was in a band for two seconds with a Christian guy. He was really, really good. And he introduced me to Antester, which is probably the first black metal song I've ever heard now that I think about it. And I he showed me the 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 opening riff for one of their songs. And it's like it goes dun 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 Um Yeah. That was that was like the ultimate band. I was like, yes, we're gonna be the greatest band of all time. And then he moved to China. He moved to China, and then um, he got a girlfriend and cut his hair and got married, and that. And then he de was domesticated, and that was the end of uh, my my uh, rock and roll dreams. So, so there's that. Hold on, I gotta make sure that my uh, my video didn't get blocked here. Okay, the video didn't get blocked. Excellent, we're in business. Greetings, Vin. Did you guys update your old videos, music quality, or did YouTube do it yourself? Uh, we've been doing a lot of work on the channel, bro. A, t a ton, a ton of work on the channel. Um, and we spent about three hours today trying to come up, uh, trying to work on the logistics on a new feature that's really exciting. Um, and I think we solved that problem. So, yeah, we've been doing a lot of work because I really... Um, you know, I made a vow to myself this year that we were going to really step up the channel, step up the interaction. I, I think the the strength of our channel isn't necessarily like people are excited to see like our reviews or whatever. I think the strength of the channel is like our community and the interactivity. And so we're trying to really focus on creating different ways and being really creative and investing a lot of time and money <laughs> um, into making the channel bigger this year around so yes what's up uh song snob if antester was particularly good for christian black metal oh i think uh thanks scotty super chat on for from scotty i appreciate it bring me the horizon parasite eve i like bring me the horizon my buddy uh alex pierce he he didn't he doesn't like bring me the horizon at all he's like oh those guys suck Whose team are you on, Godzilla or King Kong? Mm. Godzilla or King Kong? I think I'm going to have to go with Godzilla, bro. I think I'm going to have to go with Godzilla. What you got, King? How does the shepherd of your church treat you for listening to heavy metal? Uh, he treats me pretty good. <laughs> the shepherd of my church is uh, Jesus of Nazareth. Um, no, look, I think there's, uh, you know, this next crop of, of uh, preachers and such don't have the, the uh, old sort of prejudices for listening to metal that uh, the older generation did. Like, I think a lot of pastors are like, you know, my age now. And so I, things are a little bit different. We've made some progress, but, um, you know, there you go. Do you guys like the comedian Bill Burr? I've heard of him. I've heard a couple of the things that he's, he said, he's kind of funny for sure. I heard he, uh, he went after some people recently. And, uh, so that's always good. That's the job of the comedian. <laughs> I just saw a post. I am perpetually mad at Maynard James Keenan. <laughs> okay. Uh, there's a Chris, uh, there is a Christian black metal band called Frost Like Ashes that had some of the most depressing lyrics I've heard at the time for a reason. They weren't good, but it was interesting. Huh, I'll have to look at him. I'll have to look at him. 
What Christ said and what Christ talks at fan base says are very different things. That is true. I will agree with that. Actually, you're a great guy, Vin. Many YouTubers interact with their fans. Not many inter interact with their fans as you do, Vin. My son watches your videos with me, and we enjoyed it a lot. Uh, mashallah, I appreciate it. You know, um, yeah, it, it's it's a lot different, right? Like, fans are people who are, like, fanatically devoted or whatever. And, and what I love about the village is that, like, people are not fanatically devoted to me in the sense of, like, Kellen Dross would be like, you're full of shit. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or Ben Webb, most of the time, Ben threatens to kill me every day or disrespects me or whatever, whatever. Um, and we've also had some really cool moments on the channel. Uh, when Orion, when we were first pregnant with Orion, we announced it on the channel. When uh, my kids got into a car accident a couple weeks ago, I was, like, literally online with you guys while it happened. Like, I literally took the phone call on camera. So it's a little bit... Like, I don't want to be all crazy and sentimental. It's a little bit deeper than the, the fan thing, but I definitely see what you're talking about. Um, but it's, it's, uh, you guys have been there for us in, in, and, you know, like I said, I was texting one of my guys, uh, from the channel. He's like, man, just do it, bro. Just jump quit. And then the next day I talked to Sori and that's, that helped me make a pretty significant life decision. So, like there's, it's a cool thing. Like, you know, the, the virtual world is kind of bled into the real world. You know, somebody from the channel actually married us um, a couple years ago. You know what I mean? Like we, we had uh, ponies group. We were live streaming it. And they were watching us get married. So it's just a, it's a different thing with our, with our, and I, the, everybody in our band actually is from, um, um, everybody in our band is, 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 uh, from the channel so yeah like our, our our channel life has been pretty cool so uh so thank you guys for that thank you guys for being there for us for all it's letting me in but it's saying connecting uh let me see if it's on desktop too no it's not let me get rid of desktop too i am sure there's a very simple way to solve this problem and i'm just making it more complicated than it needs to be for sure need more cell dweller yeah i think uh i think i think have you ever watched pastor rob's reaction channel uh i have not um i have not seven dusted in the house how long will god allow the suffering to continue until he tells jesus to go get his bride uh jen that's a good question um that's a really, 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 really good question, Jen. Um, and what I would say is that our job as Christians is not necessarily to um, kind of hold the fort until Jesus comes back. I think one of the main jobs as Christians is that we need to go out there and um, alleviate as much suffering as we possibly can. Um, because that's part and parcel of the gospel. And so, you know, you know, there's, there's that phrase in one of Jesus's parables, occupy until I return. And I think that that's our, that's our mission is that we are to be an occupying force in the world. And now, obviously when you're an occupying force in the human sense, it, it sounds extremely, you know, militaristic and, and whatever, um, but we are to be an occupying force for good. And so any, anywhere in the world where we see suffering, we are to be an occupying force that is hostile toward the suffering for the sake of people. So I think that that's, that's what God would have us do. Mindset of connecting. It looked like it was buffering. Yeah, man, I'm going to figure this out eventually. I'm, I'm, I'm going to figure this out. Hold on. We're going to keep doing it. Okay, so Mark, Mark, hit that link again. Hit this link again, Mark. And uh, let's see if we can't figure it out. And maybe there's some setting that I have here. So the interview is on. It's on Game Capture. I've got 249 hours of the interview time left. Let me see here. Let me see if I um, auto answer guests. Uh... 
this. So let's try that. So Mark, try. I, I've I've done a couple things. Try that thingamajig and and uh, yeah, jump out of that link and then try this link, Mark, and and see what we do. If you're supposed to be hostile towards suffering, why don't you advocating for the dismant? Why aren't you advocating for the dismantling of America? Well, I would advocate for the dismantling of America, Ben, if if there was uh, a a positive force that would fill that gap vacuum. I do not believe. I'm pretty sure China is next in line, and they're currently in the midst of a Holocaust and ethnically cleansing all the Muslims in that area. Stuck for a lot for them. So. China is about to undergo the wrath of God if they don't repent for destroying those poor people. And so uh, who's going to fill that vacuum then? Uh, then, and yet Christians cause more suffering than they heal. The Hindu and the pagan seem a lot better. Mm, I don't know about that song, Snob. You know, there, there's a St. Mary's Hospital in every city in America. So it's popular to say that Christians have caused more suffering, but... Uh, I, I don't I don't think that that's true. Believe in science and not religion. Science is the reason you're able to be on this channel. Name one thing religion has done for the universe. Well, one of the things that religion did for the universe is giving us a scientific method, Michael. <laughs> because the first scientists did not believe we were in a purposeless, disordered universe that had no telos or uh, uh, creator. It was the fact that they assumed a creator that led them to, as one scientist said, think God's thoughts after him. So I, I just think it's a it's an oversimplistic way of looking at the world to pit religion and science against each other. They're both faith based endeavors that are designed to help us understand um, the universe and our place in it. I jumped on it saying connecting still. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the gods are against us, sir. <clears throat> Not religion, but faith. Yeah, I mean, if if you want to make that dichotomy, sure, sure. <laughs> also, Nor Nadine Morsh, thousands of years of art, literature, and music. Right. Right. And the St. Mary's Hospital that's in your city would also be construed by many as a, a good thing religion has brought to the world. <clears throat> Thanks, Vin, for your answer to the channel sound quality discussion. That will most likely help the progress in my own channel. Cheers, mate. <laughs> uh, cheers, Timu. Um, yeah, anything we can do to help your channel, let me know. There's no genocide in China. They're merely sterilizing the men, forcing their women to be around Han men and educating them to be loyal supporter of the CCP. Definitely not a genocide. Right. Right, 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 right. <clears throat> That's also true. Religion has nothing to do with people suffering, my friend. It's always something else masked and sold as religion. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe religion or irreligion causes human suffering. I believe human sin causes human suffering, and you're right. We tout it in religion or philosophy or in economic theory or whatever, but at the end of the day, human beings want to impose their will onto other human beings and set up hierarchies of value of other human beings, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so I think uh, my, my friend Fahad has a very, very insightful understanding of, of human nature, for sure. <clears throat> With the multiple segregations in humanity, do you ever think that humanity would one day become a symbiotic life form to this planet instead of a parasitic life form? Uh, yes, because I'm a post-millennialist and I believe in an optimistic future. So I do believe we're going to figure it out. I was excited about having the conversation. I always thought you'd be the perfect Christian to have a religious conversation with. Mark, uh, I'm not the perfect anything. Um, let's continue to try, shall we? Let's try it this way. Maybe because I switched some of the uh, the the thingamajiggies here because I just can't leave well enough alone. So maybe me switching those things created that problem. So let's try it. Let's try it this way. All right. Try it again. Uh, there's a pretty good book on this called The Myth of Religious Violence, Secular Ideology, and the Roots of Modern Conflict. Yeah, Perk, that's a... If I had another person, I'd do a book club for sure. 
How convenient, then. A religious person says religion isn't causing suffering. Meanwhile, people are suffering and saying the cause is religion. Maybe try listening to people you heard for a change. Well, listen, if somebody got stung by a bee and they say that they're hurt because uh, they got hit by a rock, I can still empathize with the people who are hurt while simultaneously saying it wasn't a rock that hurt you, it was a bee. So saying... To be historically accurate and saying, yeah, religious people have done horrible things, but the root is not religion, the root is human nature, is not invalidating the pain that religious people have brought to people. Vin, do you consider yourself to be a holder of Reformed theology? Mm, I don't know if I want to answer that question. Let me ask it, Let me ask this question. Let me ask you a counter question. Why did you ask me that question? Let's try it that way. Bible thumpers get very nervous when you prove them wrong. They will cry and claim that they are smarter. <laughs> uh, I've found that to be, uh, again, once again, a human nature issue and not a Bible thumper issue. I have talked to many an atheist who's been proven wrong in one of their assertions and, uh, they didn't handle that well. I don't attribute that to their atheism. I just attribute that to just standard human pridefulness. Why does anyone ask any questions? That's a good question. Is it the root of human nature, though, or is it the state? <laughs> Anarchist priest questions. Well, Nadine, the state is not some uh, separate entity from uh, human beings. The state is simply another name to talk about a collection of human beings who just so happen to have authority. Authority doesn't corrupt anyone. What authority does is that it, it um, removes the natural barriers that um, hold back people's sinful expression of their sinful nature. So what authority does is it allows for those, those buffers to be removed so that the person's real nature can come through. And that's why absolute power supposedly corrupts absolutely we know this to be true because jesus according to christian theology had absolute power and he was the least corrupt person ever so it's not power that's the problem it's the people who have the power that's the problem after years of watching your videos you seem to be very at least well read into classical reform theology in fact you just said post-millennialism yes uh josh I am all of the above. Is pride the most deadly of the seven sins? I would say pride is the root and cause of all seven and 10 million other sins. Yes. I was raised an Orthodox Presbyterian. I just hear you say a lot of things I've never heard anyone without knowledge of Reformed theology say. Still connecting. Ah! But if God made human nature, then the follies of human nature are God's fault. If someone says they believe in God and say God is a good person and humans are bad, they're self-flagellating. Uh, no, or, or Ben, you could take a more nuanced view and say that God, knowing everything that would come to pass, believed that human beings were valuable enough to create and love in spite of their sin, and that he has come up with ways of reconciling man to himself and to each other, and that we have a bright future ahead of us because uh, of those truths. You could look at it that way as well. <clears throat> Floth is some bad shit. <clears throat> Gotta disagree there. Power is addictive, and with all addictions, you need a little bit more to get the same high as before. Well, Majestic, I'm not sure that we're disagreeing. I agree with you. My issue is, is that how come people don't get addicted to, to giving to the poor? Why is it when people get power that their addictions always skew to negative negativity? It's a very important question. It's like when I say with The Purge, you know, the movie The Purge, you, 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 the movie The Purge is not about people uh, going to the local Walmart because all laws have been suspended going to the local Walmart and distributing all that they have to the all, all that you see in the local Walmart to the poor or robbing a bank 
and then giving the money to poor people so that they can have housing. That's not what happens when the purge happens. And I think you have to ask the question, what's the variable there? Miracle Man from Ukraine, what's up? Vin, you do enough of this work to be a priest too. You know that, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll accept that, Nadine. I'll receive that. Thank you very much, sis. I appreciate that. To reply, I've seen Samoan and Tongan churches where people are addicted to giving to charity to the point where they can't afford the charity. Right, Majestic. And I would say as a Christian, that's because the Spirit of God has now uh, in, indwelt them. And so now you become addicted to good things because uh, the Spirit of God is the essence of all all, all good. Ya Rasulullah. Give me a kiss. Say PJs. Say PJs. Yeah. PJ? Yeah. Oh, Zara, you're pointing to them? What about, oh no. Uh, <laughs> hey, look at the people. Yeah. Say, oh no. Oh no. Oh no! The brightness is so no. bright. Where's Orion? Can you see his black hair? Mm. I love you. Me? I love you. Mm. I love you. Well, that white light looks really good. It creates yeah. a real studio effect. We need to get one of those things. Holy moly! I know. I already have the plan. But yeah, Rasulullah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you say yeah, mm. <laughs> All right. Say bye bye. Bye say, guys. Say bye village. Bye. Oh, you did say bye village. Bye. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, give me a kiss. We gotta go. No. Mm, yeah. Say good night. Say good night, Daddy. Say Orion out. 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 Say Orion. Orion. Say out. Out. Yeah. Yeah, there, there you go. Out. All right. Mashallah. I love you. Okay, he's not a man, so. Give it to the people. Do it there. Go Say, mwah. Mwah. Yeah. Say mwah. Okay. <laughs> now get out. I love you. I know. I know. Mashallah. He's such a good boy. He's such a good boy. He's a terrible boy. He's cute. He listen, Fahad, he is as 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 handsome as Dihia. Okay? But he he is he is uh, he is as terrible as Abu Jahil. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! <clears throat> you will watch the show, The Chosen. Your family will love it. Yeah, bro. Um, uh, The Chosen is like, yeah. I watch the whole thing. It's it's crazy. What's up, Timothy Daigle? He looks like sorry. I know he's a beautiful kid. He's a beautiful kid. He's he's gonna be he's gonna be doing uh he's gonna be doing some of our commercials for our, our products because we're gonna have some uh, baby stuff. Hey, Ian in the house. Is he listening to Tool yet? Look, I I promise you guys. Uh, when we're practicing our song, the the one that we're writing that Jay's taking forever to work on, he um. Um, he rocks, man. Like he, he really, 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 really likes it. It's crazy. It's a crazy, crazy situation. Um, do I have anything, um, besides Ecamm? No, I don't. Um, let me try this. Nope. That's not right. I'm still here guys. Don't worry. Let me turn interview off and then turn interview back on. So our interview is on now. Oh, Mark, I think I got you, buddy. I think I got you. Guest is in the green room. Uh, I go Can like this. Me? I think I go like this. Hey, Mark's in Can the you? house. Okay, Mark, hold on, little bro. 
I got to get my okay. uh, my headset on so we can have this combo. I say, yo, because I got you on mute right now so you guys don't hear my double echo. Hey, everybody, this is Mark. Say what's up to Mark. This is like, uh, what do you call it? Where everybody knows your name. <laughs> Y'all didn't know your brother could sing, huh? And they're always <laughs> glad you came. <laughs> All right, hold on. All right, so you got Mark there. I'm going to take myself off mute. I'm off mute. <laughs> All right, hold on. All right, so you got Mark there. I'm going to take myself off mute. I'm off mute. <laughs> All hey right, Mark, hold on. All right, so you got Mark yeah. there. I'm gonna take myself off mute. I keep hearing you repeat it there for a second. <laughs> yeah, I gotta figure that out. Hey Mark, right. hold on. All right, so you got Mark yeah. there. I'm Give me one second. Off mute. I keep hearing you repeat it there for a second. Mute. Okay, so I got this guy. Yeah, on I gotta cam. figure that out. Hey Mark, right. hold on. All right, so you got Mark yeah. there. Give me hold on for a second. I keep hearing you repeat it there for a second. Okay, so I got this guy. Yeah, I gotta figure that out. Hey Mark, hold on. All right, so you got Mark there. Give me hold on for a second. Four tacos. I keep hearing you repeat it there for a second. Okay, so I got this guy. Yeah, I gotta figure that out. Hey Mark, hold on. All right, so you got Mark there. Mark, hold on, bro. Hold on for a second. Four tacos. I keep hearing you repeat it there for a second. Okay, so. Okay, so I gotta figure this out. Give me one second, guy. Fahad, you're laughing. You're laughing, Fahad, because I said that he was as beautiful as Dihia and as uh, terrible as Abu Jahil. <laughs> Abu Jahil. Abu Jahil was probably too far. Maybe Faraon. Faraon. Uh, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I didn't forget you, my agnostic deist friend. Just give me one <laughs> moment so that I can figure out my audio. Let me see. I think I'm... Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, use echo cancellation. I did. Broadcast system audio. When in screen sharing mode? No. Speakers. Hmm. Maybe external. Maybe I'll do as the headphones. And then let's try it again. Hmm. Maybe external. Maybe I'll do as the headphones. Hello? And then Hello? let's try it again. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, whatever you did, I hear you repeat it now. Before, I wasn't. That's the headphones. Uh, Hello? You can still hear it, though, right? Hello? Let's try it again. You can still hear, like, yeah, the echo? Uh, whatever you did, I hear you repeat yeah, it Yeah, I can now. hear the echo Before now. Wasn't. That's the headphones. Shit. Hello? Hold on. You can still hear it, though, right? Hello? Stand by! You can still hear, like, yeah, the echo? <laughs> hey, Tyrone. Good to see you, buddy. Tyrone Slice in the house. Uh, looping again. Hold on, hold on. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, Majestic Demon Lord. Man, I haven't seen that guy in such a long time. Holy moly. That's really cool. Pick the setting and audio input channel on the left and right stereo. Otherwise, the audio input channels will be combined. Stereo will not be enabled. An echo cancellation feature is turned on. So what about, what if I did it this? Movie, all right, let's try that again. Or should I disconnect the mic? Is that the issue? Hmm, all right, let's try it again because I can't I hear disconnect you. Disconnect the mic. Is that the issue? Hello, hmm. all right, let's try. I'm it again. hearing what you said I can't before hear you mic. did whatever you did. That <laughs> That's what's looping. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Uh, I'm hearing what you said uh, before uh, you did whatever. Well, now I'm hearing myself. That's what's you know going what? like five seconds ago. Here, let's try this. I'm hearing what you said before you did whatever. You know what? Here, let's try this. I just unplug the mic. You know what? Here, let's try this. I'm hearing a repeat. Unplug the mic. You know what? Here, let's try this. I'm hearing a repeat. Unplug the mic. You know what? Unplug the mic. You know what? I love the mic. Great, Ben. You know what? <laughs> See, ben, ben will say, oh, this is... And then, like, he won't solve the problem. 
<laughs> so, okay. Uh, the mic picks up the stream audio. That's typically the issue. I agree. I did this once with Zonia, and she was able to do it. Stay with me. Stay with me. Don't leave. Don't leave. Nah, baby. Nah, baby. Nah, baby. Don't leave me, girl. Maybe I'll make the speakers. Samson G Trek, bro. What's up? I have no nah, baby, so nah, baby. To get stuff or Don't leave uh -huh. me, girl. Maybe I'll make the speakers. No, I'm. We're gonna have the ride. Samson if it, even bro. if it's What's two o'clock in the morning, nah, we're baby, gonna have the ride. Mark, don't disconnect. Maybe I'll make the speakers. No, no, no. We're gonna have the ride. Even if it's two o'clock in the morning, we're gonna have the ride. Okay. Uh huh. Mark, don't disconnect. No, no, no. We're gonna have the ride. Okay, I'm gonna try this again. Because I made the uh, yeah, Mark, thing don't with um, Okay, can you hear me? Uh, no, 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 no. We're going to have more rides. I can hear you, but I can't can hear Do you hear an uh, Go like this the, if you uh, can hear an Mark, echo. Um, okay, can you hear me? Uh, can't, no, hear no, no, no. can't hear an echo? You can hear an echo. I can hear you, but I can't You can hear I can't hear anything hear an Go like this if you can hear an echo. Unplug. Can you hear me? Can't hear an echo? You can't hear an echo. That I will give you is me being an idiot. Go like this if you Bro, you unplugged your headphones. How the hell did you think you were going to be hooked? You can't hear an echo. That I will give you. So that's that's me being an idiot. Give me a second. And now it's looping. Holy moly. You unplugged your headphones. How the hell did you think you were going to be hooked? You can't hear an echo. That I will give you. So that's that's me being an idiot. Give me a second. <laughs> now it's looping. Like, holy moly. You unplugged your headphones. How the hell did you think? All right. Can you guys hear me? Am I looping? No. You can hear I, me, I, but I'm not looping? Correct. Okay. Go like this if I'm not looping. Give me a second, guys. Give me a minute. to the connector. Dorian! Blah. Say something. Uh, hi. <laughs> I, it, it's, I just hear it out of your whatever speaker you have, but it's not like a loop. So it's just like a slight echo is all. Okay, that's the best you're going to get. Out of me. It works. Hold on. <laughs> I got to turn this down because it's killing my. One second. No. All right. System profit. Where's the sound? I have to do sound manually. I can't believe I did it. <laughs> I mean, I see it's a little, I, I see it's a little echoey. Show volume in menu bar. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Turn down that. All right, we're in business. Okay. Let's have our chat, my friend. All right. With minimal uh, echo. <clears throat> okay, so let's go. Let's talk. Let's chat. All right. So um, uh, I guess uh, uh, I'll start with. Uh, so I've been wanting to do this. I actually thought about having a conversation with you for the for a long time. Actually, while seeing some things that you talked about with how conversations you've had with atheists and stuff, like 
uh, as an agnostic, I kind of fit in that camp a little bit. Um, but uh, so for me, the one thing that you said in a, in a video before that I thought was uh, uh, perfect was that when a lot of atheists will say that it takes uh, that it takes no faith in science. Again, it depends on the definition of faith, but I do believe it requires some belief in whatever. You know, like uh, you, you've got to believe that the scientists are telling you the truth, or you got to believe that their methods were correct. Right. Right. Um, so for me, uh, and I guess the reason why I'm not religious too much in any sense is um, I'm with, okay with saying I don't know. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, it feels more reliable or more uh, likely, I guess, uh, for certain things over other things. So I go based on what I feel is the most likely, and I yeah. don't even believe in it. Like, I, you know, to right. me, faith, the definition of faith is unconditional belief. But I don't know if that's the actual true definition. Um, yeah, yeah. So I had a... Okay, so Jen, are you saying my volume is too high or too low? Okay, um, but uh, so let's let's deal with that. So first, um, when it, when we talk about faith, so here's the definition. I'm gonna throw this out to you, and then you tell me if it's bullshit or you go, oh, that kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so for me, the audio is loud. For them, it's too low. Uh, if you think it's too low, then you turn it up. I can hear him just fine. Okay. All right. So Majestic Demon Lord says that it, it's perfect, so that's good. Okay. Here's what I'll say about faith. Because you and I are not omniscient, that means by necessity that in order to function in the world, we have to have um, faith, an evidence-based faith. So here's what I mean by that. You Have you ever flown on a plane? Uh, unfortunately, no, but I get the general. <laughs> okay. So let's, let's say you have flown on a plane, right? You're 30,000 feet in the air. Do you know definitively that that pilot isn't, hasn't taken a shot of heroin? Didn't have a twin brother who took flight school in his name, right? Isn't some crazy terrorist who's gonna crash into the side of a mountain. You don't know definitively any of that but here's what you do know you do know that southwest airlines has flown thousands of people they've had you know 20 plane crashes since their inception uh most people do not want to die in a plane crash so the likelihood of him crashing the plane etc 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 right so you have faith in that pilot but the faith is based on reason and evidence. So to me, faith is the glue between uh, logic and certainty, right? So there's gotta be something in the middle that brings those two together because we can't be certain that the pilot is not crazy. We, we can't have that certainty, but in order to function in the universe, we have to have some form of faith. But we would not, if we looked up in the cockpit and the, and the guy was five years old, we're going to do some arithmetic and say, I'm going to go ahead and exit this uh, vehicle, right? So, so my understanding of faith is that if you really pin me down, it's, it's the glue between um, reason and certainty. And I think, I think, um, and I, I think I actually that's Jesus's definition of faith, and, and I'll tell you why. Did you see the conversation I had with Arn Ra? Uh, unfortunately, no, I missed that. 
Okay. Well, I mean, whether or not it's unfortunate is a subjective, <laughs> a subjective idea. Um, so Aaron Raw made the incorrect statement that Jesus said, "Just believe my bullshit." <laughs> Obviously, I don't believe that Jesus said just to believe my bullshit. Um, but Jesus said something very interesting in John chapter ten. And that's the reason I define faith the way that I just did, okay? Um, so here, here it is. I'm about to, I'm about to share the screen so that you can see what I'm talking about. Um, okay, here it is. Let's share. Here we go. Screen share, and now you can see it, right? Barely. Okay, is that better? Okay. So I'll just put it up there. Okay, perfect. Okay. So here, here Jesus makes a claim that he's God in the flesh. Uh, the Jews are about to stone him because that's what you're supposed to do to people who claim they're God but are not. And listen to how Jesus says. He says, do you say of him whom the Father consecrated and sent into the world, you are blaspheming because I said I am the Son of God? Now watch this. If I am not doing the works of my Father, then do not believe me. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and understand that the Father is in me and I'm in the Father. Okay, so the context of that passage is Jesus had just done a miracle he healed a guy that was born blind um the you know it's 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 there he was blind now he's not blind so when he says the works of the father he's talking about these miracles so what he's saying is look if i'm just a regular guy and i'm talking shit then fine don't believe me but if i'm doing things that nobody else can do then you should believe me right so it's it's I understand that you cannot have certainty because there's millions of people claiming to be the Messiah, but I'm doing something nobody can do. So I understand that you have to apply some modicum of faith and belief, but there's some evidence there for you to differentiate me from other people. And so that's why I came up with that definition of faith is that I take that principle and then I just apply it across the board. If I've got a scientist that's an epidemiologist, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that properly, and he's done the work, he's gone to school for longer than me and you have been alive, I'm going to believe what he has to say about masks and social distancing over a guy on the internet. See what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's faith based on evidence. So that's how I define faith. Right. The same case. If right. that is your definition of it, I am willing to go with that definition because it's cool. just a word that defines a specific concept, right? Um, and uh, that, that's how I usually say things. Like, uh, you know, we can argue what the real definition means in the end. It's just a word that can mean anything. Uh, right. So um, now, like, for me, obviously, I had the most simplistic definition of belief is what you would call, you know, faith. Uh, and faith sure. is an unconditional version of that, uh, that nothing can change your opinion. Um, you know, so even if evidence would show against it or something like that, that, uh, that... Give me two seconds. Can you turn... Do you have a microphone? Can you turn that up? Uh, it's part of my... Uh, I can probably turn it up. Let's see if I can do something on my end. Okay. Test. Let me see. Um, I think I just, I think I just solved the problem. Okay. Can, can guys, can you hear Mark? Um, can you hear Mark better? Mark, say testing one, two. Testing one, two. Yeah, I'm sure they can hear you better now. Yeah, everybody's saying better. Okay, so it's my okay. bad. My bad, big bro. <laughs> 
yeah, so uh, in essence, uh, faith, I believe, is uh, it, it can mean like my personal definition that I've used for years, which is simply belief is what you just explained as faith. And faith is an unconditional version of that, that even evidence couldn't change. Um, and, uh, you know, I guess, it, you know, it's carried over from the the. Christopher Hitchens of the world or the, you know, uh, which I adore Christopher Hitchens, uh, especially his political views. But outside of that, um, the, uh, I guess where I come in, where I come with, uh, I, I would agree with that definition of faith. And I would agree that uh, I follow the same rules. And honestly, any field of science requires that same definition that you gave a faith into it. You got to have faith that the scientists who made the theory did all the tests correctly, that they did, you know, right. they did the trial and errors, you know, as in the scientific method proper. Um, same with any drug you get from the FDA or, you know, approved by the FDA, uh, what have you. Uh, you got to have faith in all those, uh, right. you know, that they did things correctly. Right. Now, the degree of evidence that is required, I guess, is where the next separation would come, right? Um, like for me, uh, biblical for biblical stuff, uh, Abrahamic religions, or any other religion, even Buddhist, Buddhism is complicated because it's not necessarily book oriented, right? So, um, but for me, like ancient book isn't evidence enough for me, and I understand people have personal experiences, and that's usually the key, the thing a lot of religious people will say is their personal experiences, their personal relationship. And I'm not here to tell them that they're wrong or anything like that. Um, I haven't had any uh, personally, um, yeah. you know, but, uh, and I'm not going to say that anybody is wrong or right. Um, so it, but testimony for it in, is unreliable in my opinion. So, um, you know, it, you know, like, uh, I mean, they've proven it for like criminal, criminal courts. You can't rely on testimony for that. You can't, you know, the brain will remember things differently than actually happened, uh, stuff like that. So um, I don't know where I'm going with this, but just generally putting out where my feet stand in these relations. And I guess agnostic, I would argue is a, form of atheism um you know pump, some people would disagree um i'm just not an unconditional atheist meaning right you know like i don't believe there is no god right i just don't know if there's one right um and i'm okay with that and i'm okay with not um saying i don't know right. um you know to me a lot of religious things do feel like uh, what the famous term God of the gaps, um, where God is there to s explain the things we don't understand until science explains it. And then he fill and then God fills in the other things we don't understand. Uh, it, uh, I, I think, uh, as the DS perspective, uh, where I would call myself somewhat deistic is it's not that I, I'm a deist because I don't necessarily put all stock in that. Like, I'm not saying that is actually true. Um, I feel it's the most likely if there was a God. That um, can you just it, define deism for the audience real quick? Um, so basically, there's different forms of it, of course, but essentially, uh, there is a, a a divine creator or something that uh, or the universe came from a divine some being some, and then has nothing to do with the world after that. Um, it, it's just, it, it was a prime mover, whether it was intelligent or not, uh, is still divisive among theists, but it could just be some concept or some force that created what everything is and doesn't interact with it. The kid on the uh, beach builds a sandcastle and then he sees a kite and off he goes, but the sandcastle is right. still there, right? Right. And it could even be, wasn't even intelligently built. It's just a force. Right. Um, you know, um, you know, I, like for me, like, it, this is going to sound super silly, but like for me, like it's just as equal as, you know, we're in a simulation. Um, <laughs> you know, silly. like, uh, you know, it's, and to me, it, it all equals the same. Um, science for me, you can be a scientist 
in a religious person. I, I think people are stupid for saying you can't be both. Isaac Newton was. Correct. Uh, he was a Christian. I don't, I don't. I don't think it's stupid. I just think that the modern atheist who is not, and there's no way I'm going to say this without offending people, and I promise I'm not trying to, but the modern atheists, I call them YouTube atheists, are not people who are as introspective as you are. They are people who saw a Christopher Hitchens video or a Sam Harris video, and then off they go. They're not familiar mm -hmm. with Bertrand Russell and any of those people. So they say ignorant things like pitting religion against science, not knowing, especially in the Western world, the, the history and the legacy of Christian thought and its contribution to the scientific endeavor, right? Right. Not, not to mention the Islamic uh, contributions to mathematics back right. in, I forget his name, but uh, uh, yeah, sometime in a long time ago. I, I don't even have a date period, but uh, there is a, it, uh, right. I think it was a caliphate. I can't remember um, yeah. Yeah. Who, who contributed heavily to science. Um, yeah, and, and, and yeah. mathematics. Yeah, and, and that's something that Zonia and I were talking about in our, our, our last chat like this. So, yeah, I agree. So, so here's what I would say. I'm pretty sure I agree with everything you said. And you said something really interesting that I was going to jump on. That nobody mm -hmm. ever jumps on, but you said it. And you're the first person that's not a Christian that's actually said it. Which is that you're basically that your unbelief is not invincible either. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that because modern atheists are usually on the offensive, they do mm -hmm. not realize that many times that their unbelief is also invincible. They've just done it the other way. So one example would be I was talking to another you know, famous atheist, if I said his name, you'd know. And he said, uh, I don't believe in God because there's no evidence for him. I said, Roger that. I said, tell me what your standards of evidence are. He said, I don't know. I said, well, that's a pretty interesting heuristic, right? You don't believe in God <laughs> because there's no evidence for him. But then you won't de determine what your standards of evidence for. So you can always stay in unbelief. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> It's very similar to uh, a person who will not be convinced by anything that right. uh, what they believe isn't true on the on the Christian side. So w what I would say is, OK, I'm with you. I agree with everything. I don't believe personal experience. I had a personal experience with God is a good epistemology to ground your entire eternity on if the claims right, of Christ right. are true. Right. Mm -hmm. Here's what I'll say, though. Have, have you seen that very interesting Jordan Peterson discussion that's making its rounds all over the place? Uh, I have not. Maybe you should uh, send me a link in the chat. Yeah, so... so I, I won't look at it now, but yeah. Yeah, so in talking about Jesus, Jordan said... Because, you know, he talks a lot about, you know, archetypical features in mythology and historical psychology. And one of the things that he said about um, Jesus was that in the person of Jesus, both of those meet because he's a historical figure, but there's also this mythology around him. And he said, mm -hmm. that's, that's very compelling. You know, when people say, oh, you believe in Jesus, well, or, or, or well, I believe in Thor, I believe in the flying spaghetti monster. Nobody believes that the flying spaghetti monster was a historical person. Right, no, right. Nobody believes that Thor is a historical person. Everybody who is anybody in the field of historical criticism believes that Jesus lived, that he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. Most of these guys, Bart Ehrman changed his uh, view. He said initially that Jesus was you know, buried in the tomb of Joseph Ar Ar Arimathea. But now he believes that Jesus was taken off the cross and dumped in a mass grave just like everybody else. Okay, fine. So so I've got a historical person who actually lived. A lot of people don't know this, but uh, the, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in particular, are actually valid historical documents that historists use to understand the seats and labor of Jesus' day. I can, get you, I can get you documentation of that. Uh, that's a fact. <laughs> Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, well, 
I don't want to get lost in the weeds. We, we, we can talk about that for a long time. Okay, so we've got this person, Jesus. He, we know he existed as much as we can know, right? Um, we, we know that he lived and died under the reign of Pontius Pilate. We know that he was crucified. And we know that he was buried, whether in the tomb or a mass grave. And then we know that within the first generation of his death, this religion exploded based on the idea that he rose from the dead. So the message of the first Christians was not believe our bullshit no matter what. The <laughs> message of the first Christians was you saw this guy was killed in public. And now he's alive. That's a fact. That's what they were saying. Nobody discounts that. I can actually show you a pretty interesting quote from Tacitus. I probably will in a second. Um, so that that's the thing for me, right? There was no YouTube 2,000 years ago. So mm -hmm. if the resurrection actually happened, then there needs to be overwhelming historical, psychological, and circumstantial evidence that would lead a rational person to believe that something uncommon happened with this guy. And that is the basis of uh, my Christian faith. It's not, mm -hmm. you know, all this other stuff. You know, where you're right. talking about the faith and the, and, the, and the fuzzy feelings and all that, which I get a lot of fuzzy feelings. Um, and I believe that they're real, but even, even in my faith tradition, those things are looked upon extremely skeptically, mm -hmm. <laughs> extremely. Right. Like some, yeah. Somebody mentioned the faith tradition I come from and I, and I, I am, I'm a reformed Christian and reformed Christianity is extremely, it's an extremely cognitive version of Christianity that I think swings too far the other way and, and is against emotionalism and miracles and things like that. It's, it's kind of weird, but I come from that. And obviously that's because I'm constructed that way and you know, whatever. Okay. So I'm going to push the ball back to you. Tell me, tell me what you think about that. Um, well, I, it's, uh, it makes sense that, uh, you know, it's a historical figure. Um, uh, you know, obviously you got a lot of people claiming that, uh, you know, there's no historical evidence or whatever. Uh, uh, we're just going to say, let's say that there is, like, I personally don't know. Um, but uh, I, I'm going to take your word for it, word for it, word on it, um, on whatever source that you get it from, uh, just for the sake of the conversation at the very least. And let's just say, let's just roll with that. And okay. to me, it's just, okay, he may have existed. Uh, Jim Jones existed. Um, you know, Buddha existed, we know for mm -hmm. a fact. Uh, Muhammad existed. Uh, existed. What separates the truth being, you know, the claim of that book and those in that tradition and that culture that sprung out of it versus the Buddhist one, or you know, dare I say the Jim Jones one? You know, obviously that's that's a little extreme. But uh, or I don't the, think uh, or I don't Muhammad. think the Jim Jones analogy is extreme because. <laughs> especially in the first two, three centuries of the church, thousands of people willingly went to their deaths because of this guy. I'm talking about Jesus. Right, right. Um, and I, I'll, I'll show you that in a second. Yeah, uh, I, I think one of the major differences is you use the word claim, and that's one of them, right? Um, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for all my Muslim friends in the house, never made any claim that he was going to rise from the dead. Buddha never claimed that he was going to bodily rise from the dead. Moses never claimed that. Uh, so one of the things about Jesus, he makes it very simple because he makes all these crazy bombastic claims about himself. Okay. <laughs> right? Like, like, listen, bro, we've all seen John Kennedy. You, you know, I'm so sure you've seen the Magruder film, you know, whatever, horrible, hey man, nice shot, whatever. Um, so when you have a guy that's killed publicly, when you have a popular political... And Jesus was a political figure. He wasn't a religious one. I'll talk about that in a second. When you have a popular political figure that gets executed in public, to then say that he rose from the dead uh, is pretty crazy, right? And mm -hmm. so to me, when you ask that question, one is I'll say, well, none of them were making these crazy claims. They died and that was it. Everything was like spiritual or philosophical after that. Um, with Muhammad, it was everything was spiritual after that. With uh, Buddha, everything is philosophical after that. 
it's only the Christians who are saying, our guy bodily rose from the dead. We touched him. We ate with him, yada, yada, yada. So now the question is, did he or didn't he? And if he did, then I'm going to say by faith everything else he said was true. If he didn't, then I'm going to say by faith everything else he said was bullshit. Right. Right? Right. So uh, what's your thoughts on that? If Jesus actually rose from the dead bodily, like physically rose from the dead, what would you be your understanding of him? Um, I would definitely say there was something there. Um, now the, yeah. the I, I would to say uh, I would have faith in everything else he said. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I would go that far. I would probably cherry pick the things and have like I need a little more proof on something that has nothing to do with what he did. Right? You know. Um, because uh, let's say some someone somehow had the ability to uh, either a fake their death or b actually come back, you know, uh, it could be a, a physical mutation. It could be whatever. There, there's many things I don't know. You know, like it's it's that shroud. I don't know. I, I'm not him. Um, uh, it could be anything, uh, but I will take what he's saying about it uh, a little bit more. Uh, I'll listen more into it. Right. You know, I'm not going to just like, oh, you know, it's probably some bullshit, you know, like I'm going to listen. Um, I'm going to look into it. Um, but uh, that's the big piece, too, is like uh, there isn't a cornerstone. Right. To, that says if this is true, all of this must be true. Uh, I think it's a logical fallacy. Uh, you need this to be true. And each thing should be proven in its own merits to a degree. At a certain point, it's like, all right. Everything in between these two points, you know, there's not a huge leap between this and that. They might be wrong. I might be wrong in, in having faith in those things. Sure. But, you know, they're probably going to be minor. Um, but I, I would say, okay, there's something to this. If it, if it, would, if it could be proven that, you know, uh, he rose and it wasn't a David Copperfield stunt, right. you know, or something, something like that, you know, um, you know, because uh, it being written down or people saying that they saw it, I mean, like, you know, we know that stage magicianship were, it, it exists or things have been embellished a, a year or two later after the event has occurred, um, you know, stuff like that. Uh, I know a lot of the Christian religious texts, um, uh, you might be able to prove me wrong in this, but from my understanding, a lot of them came out 100 years after his existence. Most of the texts rose. Um, uh, yeah, that's, uh, but, that's, that's untrue. And I'll show that to you in a second. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's like, I am all for going, you know, listening or whatever, if, if it's true. Um, yeah. but it, it, it's a small step and I do want to get into a conversation about, uh, if it is all true, uh, yeah. you know, to a person who, you know, who's, who didn't have that belief in, you know, what that would affect, but, uh, I would prefer to finish this conversation before jumping into that one, but yeah, 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 we can do that for sure, for sure. Uh, okay, so let, let's 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 deal with a couple things. So, so Acts chapter seven, okay. So, and and, and, and let's interact here. So, I let me let me address what you said earlier when you said even if Jesus bodily rose from the dead, it doesn't logically follow that everything else he said was true. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Here, here, here's what I'll say though, and this is why. The, the plane ride analogy is how we started because we had to define we had to define what faith is right so I right. said faith is the glue between rationality and certainty whatever right mm -hmm. so I agree with you just this is the same thing about the the syllogism that you use to justify going 30,000 feet in the air in a metal tube right <laughs> like you don't have a logical necessity to say, oh, yeah, just because all these other facts are true, that means I should jump on a plane and put my life in this guy's hand. None of those give you any logical certainty. That's where faith comes in. So while I agree with you, yes, Jesus actually bodily rising from the dead doesn't logically validate everything he said. But to me, it justifies faith in what he said. If he didn't rise from the dead, then it invalidates faith in what he said. That's that's where I'm coming from, based mm -hmm. on that understanding of what faith is. Because you conceded 
that I think we both agree on this, that, like I said, faith is necessary for all of us to function in this universe. Right. Uh, otherwise, you'd be sitting there, you know, not doing anything. Correct. Yeah. You'd be in your house and all that. And even then, you have to have faith <laughs> that your roof isn't crash on your head, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so here, here's, so I'll, I'll start there. Here's what I'll say. In uh, the book of Acts, so, so you're familiar with, um, you know, the gospel, the, the Christian story is centered mainly around Israel, the people of Israel, right. whatever. Yeah. And so by the time of the Roman occupation, um, it was known as Iudea or Judea, right? So that was, that's, that's the area where they were, right? So the Christian church starts Acts chapter two, Peter preaches his sermon, 3000 people get saved. Okay. Now we've got, now we're ready. Now we're rolling. Okay. And the church stays in Israel or Judea, even though Jesus told them to go in all the world, they found each other. They fell in love with each other and they're like, Hey, it's all good here. Let's, let's hang out. Okay. Acts chapter seven happens. Stephen gets stoned. So at the beginning of Acts chapter 8, it says, after Stephen was stoned, a great persecution broke out against the church, and then it dispersed the church. And then it said, those who fled were preaching the gospel as they went, and so the gospel spread basically in the known world, right? Okay, now watch this. So here's Tacitus, who is by no means a Christian, and I, I'll give you all these, all these sources. <clears throat> here's uh, Tacitus. Um, and I'll, I'll put it up here so everybody can kind of see it, inshallah. Hopefully everybody can see it. Okay, here we go. Cornelius Tacitus. Okay. And he says, 44.2, we'll start here. Yet no human effort, no princely largesse or offerings to the gods could make the infamous rumor disappear that Nero had somehow ordered the fire, you know, the great fire of Rome. Therefore, in order to abolish that rumor, Nero falsely accused and executed with the most exquisite punishments those people called Christians who were infamous for their abominations. The originator of the name, Christ, was executed as a criminal by the procurator Pontius Pilate during the reign of Tiberius. Now watch this. Now remember what I said about Acts 7? They started in Judea, they were preaching... Then they got persecuted, and then they expanded. Watch what he says. It, it's unbelievable. And though we pressed, this destructive superstition erupted again, not only through Judea, which was the origin of this evil, but also through the city of Rome, to which all that is horrible and shameful floods together and is celebrated. Uh, therefore, first those were seized who admitted their faith, and then using the information <laughs> provided, a vast multitude were convicted, etc., 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 etc. Well, I'll just keep reading. Not so much for the crime of burning the city, but for the hatred of the human race and perishing, they were additionally made into sports. They were killed by dogs by having the hide of beasts attached to them, or they were nailed to crosses or set aflame, and when the daylight passed away, they were used as nighttime lamps. Nero gave his own gardens for this spectacle and performed a circus game in the habit of a, car a charioter mixing with the plebes or driving about the race course. Even though they were clearly guilty and merited being made most recent example of the consequences of crime, people began to pity these sufferers because they were consumed, not for the public good, but on account of the fierceness of one man, end quote. Okay, so, so here's what he's saying. What... Uh, Tacitus just said is that um, he pretty much, you can align what he just said with the book of Acts, right? Started in Judea, suppressed for a time, and then exploded because everybody was, was, was preaching as they went. And that's exactly what he said happened. Tacitus does not mention the super, the, what the superstition was. He says there is a pernicious superstition that is attached to Christianity. But what he does mention is that Jesus was crucified. He mentions cru Jesus was crucified under Pontius Pilate. So in your mind, what do you think the pernicious superstition was that they were going around telling everybody? Uh, probably that he rose from the dead, you know, I most agree. likely. I agree. Um, yeah, uh, that would make, that would be, that, if, if something like that happened, that would be the thing you would go around and talk about, right? 
Um, <laughs> he wouldn't say, hey, he turned, uh, you know, he turned water into wine. Right. You know, you'd be talking about him rising from the dead. That's a little bit more uh, uh, of a hope. Uh, holy shit, a guy, a, a guy, you know, we killed lived after death. Lived yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. 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 Um, that's you know, that's that would the be... Greek. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Again, um, you know, uh, uh, again, I'm not saying it didn't happen. Uh, uh, you can say to it me, didn't happen. It won't offend you. It, well, I, I'm not, not to offend. It's not in, in worry of offending anybody. Uh, it's, it's just, it's the truth. I, I don't, uh, I can't say that it did or did not happen. Um, and uh, I just don't, uh, I just don't think the, an account, a testimonial, especially historical account is accurate. Uh, is a, is a, I don't want to say it's not accurate, but it's not, uh, uh, it's a testimony. Uh, so, and whether or not this guy was lying, I don't think he was lying, but you know, those people who are following that superstition, quote unquote, that he was talking about, um, whether they were there for it to, to witness it themselves, or if it's part of the quote unquote, I hate to use the word, but cult that was rising out of that, you know, uh, I know there's negative co context to the well, word cult, is, but it is a cult. Yeah. Yeah, look, but it, but look, yeah. all I just want to pause real quick for people mm -hmm. in the audience. Listen, if you read any scholarly book from Christians about the Old and New Testament, you're going to see the term cult 500 times because um, it, it's a shorthand form of talking about religious practice, especially as it relates to the ceremonial aspects of uh, a given faith. So, mm -hmm. there. I'm, I'm saying that for the benefit of the audience. I'm sure you already knew that, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's why I use the term, like, a, you know, it's not necessarily a negative term. Uh, it's modern cults uh, tend to have the negative connotation because of su mass suicides and things like that. But, yeah. uh, right. you know, <laughs> it kind of taints it a little bit. But, um, <laughs> you know, so... It's yeah, a small, uh, a small uh, yeah, technicality about those mass suicides and mass <laughs> homicides as well. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, it's a, it's a side effect here and there, but uh, um, the just, FDA uh, should take a, take a take a look. But uh, <laughs> no, so um, in in you know, like it, you you can be following a doctrine and uh, believing in that doctrine. They might have had faith in that testimony before as well and it was carrying on i mean people are just as um fervent about it today as they were then you know uh there are many people today that are just as fervent about it today as they were then that you know uh there's nothing to say those people that that were carrying on what he was talking about as a superstition were there during the resurrection themselves so they could be going on the word of someone else oh, as well say, say that again say that again so the people that were making the superstitions like according to the, you Tacitus. know, uh, Tacitus, uh, those people are you're talking about that superstition that they're bringing on. Uh, there's no nothing to say that they didn't get that from someone before them, you know, and before them be from the origin. You know, those people not necessarily there when the resurrection happened. So are you saying that none of those people were there when the resurrection happened? No, I'm I'm saying it, you know there, there's nothing to say that they were there. Um, so it's, it could be either or. So again, like I, I I'm, I'm the hardest person <laughs> because I, uh, I'm, I'm always on the fence with almost everything, you know, uh, and, and I'm comfortable in that seat, um, saying it, it could be this, it could be that, you know, the, I'm the what if guy, you know, um, so yeah, uh, it is an interesting, um, thing. And it, let's say that, uh, you know, it's not enough proof for me to prove that it happened just because some other people said it happened. Um, and again, it's the same with any historical book, like a regular history book, not even just a religious book, but a history book. Uh, it, it's always written in the eyes of the winners, as they say. Um, you know, or not always, but a lot of times it's from the perspective of the winner. Um, you know, like, uh, you know, they, they make the other people look like the, the criminal or the victim, uh, or they make themselves look like the victim that came back, you know. Um, if you look at American history, there's tons there that, you know, we are obviously did the wrong thing, but, you know, we make ourselves out the victim. But that's another story. But the history, historical context is not enough evidence for me either, uh, because history books are going to be, you know, 
filled with um, unreliability. I, I, I do it based on a degree of reliability. Again, I'm not saying it didn't happen. Um, and I'm not willing to say it never happened. Um, I'm just not, I guess, willing to stick my flag of faith into it, right? Um, uh, uh, I guess what would be required is something a little bit more modern to occur. Why does this all happen then? Why can't it happen? Why doesn't it happen every day? Why doesn't it happen? This, these kinds of evidences happen more often. Why does it require faith? Why, why does it, why well, is this, the Abrahamic God kind of like demand it? Well, as we said, because we're not omniscient, the only mm -hmm. way that we can function in the world is to have faith. Even well, I, I meant like more evidence. Why, why can't more evidence be presented okay. on a, not necessarily daily basis, but, you know, every century or every decade? Well, there, there's a couple of reasons why. Number one that I would say is that faith is more of an act of volition than cognition. In other words, mm -hmm. we have to take into account if we agree that faith is the only way that a non-omniscient being could function in the physical world, then we have to ask the next question. Why do we believe or disbelieve the things that we believe and disbelieve? Mm -hmm. So that is a part of the conversation that to me both sides have a very hard time conceding right um for example when you say things like and not you per se but a lot of people say this a religion is there to answer on all on, on a couple <laughs> questions mm -hmm. well if that's the case then uh why do we have deuteronomy 29 29 which says the following the secret things belong to the lord and the things revealed belong to us and our children so that we may obey all the words of this law. That text in the early, early version of the Bible is saying there's things that we don't know that God's not going to tell us. So that that religion is not designed to answer all of your unanswerable questions and then we'll just fill God in it. That, that's, that's not how it works. That religion is saying, hey, there's stuff that you don't know that you'll never know. It's the same thing. It's one of the messages of the book of Job, actually, God never shows up and explains to Job what happens to him, ever. He never shows up to Job and says, hey, man, here's why this happened, blah, 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 blah. And the implication from that is to say, bad shit is going to happen to you, too, and you're probably not going to get an explanation for it. So religion, mm -hmm. at least the Christian religion, is not designed to answer all mysteries. And here's the other thing. There are certain mysteries that get created by religion. One would be the Trinity. Just one being, three beings, simultaneously, very out of very God, not merging the, the uh, persons, but uh, not merging the substance, dividing the persons, whatever, right? There are tons of mysteries that religion creates. So there are a lot of assumptions that people have about religion. And so it, it, it makes it very hard to self-critique. So let me push back on you a little bit. Let me push on mm -hmm. you for a second. Okay. In the modern age, I don't know if you've seen this stuff. Um, I'll find it where they've got photos of like old dead people and then they have them moving. Have you seen that yet? Uh, yeah, I... Uh, I, you're shit. in a different I'm, corner of the internet than I am, it seems. <laughs> but, uh, no, I'm, I have... I'm going to find it for you because this shit is crazy, bro. So uh, I'm going to show you this and I'm going to push on you a little bit and then uh, we'll we'll take it from I there. I know people oh. used to pose with the dead, you know, back in the 1800s. Yeah, but... weird stuff. People were weird yeah. back in the day, bro. I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, but I, I want you I want you to check this out. And while I'm looking this up, I said... <laughs> that faith is usually a matter of uh, volition more than cognition, and that seemed to be an interesting statement to you. How come? Uh, can you repeat that? I'm sorry, I was looking at the thing. I thought you were going to throw something oh, up. Like yeah, that. when I said many times faith is more an activity of volition than cognition, and that seemed to be uh, significant to you. Yeah, um, so basically uh, what that says to me is uh, faith requires effort on your part. 
to is, is, is another way to sum it up is what I got got out of it. It, it requires effort rather than reflection. It uh, it's proactive proactive rather than reactive is basically another way of what you're trying to say. Is that is that correct? Uh, yes. Although... That's what I kind of got out of it. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, yeah, although what I'm trying to communicate by saying that is that there are things that we want to believe and then there are things that we don't want to believe. Right. So okay. One, one yeah. example is this COVID situation. So I had a conversation with somebody and I said, um, the guy was like, I'm not a sheep. People are sheep. They're just following what people say, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, really? Like, what about? He's like, all this mask bullshit, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, word. I said, you know what, bro? Um, uh, what are your sources? And <laughs> his source was himself. And I said, well, I mean, I mean, are you educated? And if he didn't, you know, whatever. He goes, no. He said, are you? <laughs> and I said, uh, no, but I have a source from people who are. He goes, all right, well, if you show it to me, I'll believe it. I said, Roger that. So I showed him the CDC numbers, right? And he goes, oh, man, that's from the CDC. That's a government organization. They're lying, blah, blah, blah. So you can see what's happening, right? It's like right, yeah. he doesn't want to believe. Right. He has a predetermined concept of the government being the bad guy and it's spreading to everything else. Like if he has faith in that, that means he has faith in the government, which Correct. is not 100 percent true. Uh, Correct. You know, you don't have if you have faith in the CDC it doesn't mean you have faith in everything the government does. Right. Correct. You know, Correct. Uh, that's that's Correct. the part that he can't. It's cognitive dissonance is what the you know, is the term. Right. Right. Um, so and my. My only point of that is to say um, all of us are subject to that. So faith is just as much an act of the will as it is about being convinced. And I think that everybody has to account for that in their epistemology. Otherwise, they're not going to get a clear picture. Uh, I 110% agree with that uh, statement. Uh, we're human. So <laughs> we are fallible. Uh, beyond belief. Um, so uh, what I'm saying was what... we're fallible on purpose. <laughs> so uh, I let me show you this thing. Yeah, I, I know you're gonna say uh, that. Let me show you this thing real quick. Okay. okay, you may not recognize this picture. Do you see this picture? Uh, it uh, it takes a second to go through the YouTube channel. Hold on, we're a little ahead of the YouTube channel. Yeah, there we go. Okay, Can you see it? Yes. Do you know who that is? Um, is that Muhammad Ali? Okay, good. I was, or... to say, I, I was gonna say, if you guess who this guy is, I'm gonna give you a shirt. <laughs> this is Emmett Till. Okay, Emmett, Emmett Till was accused of whistling at a white woman. Uh, they tracked him down, beat the hell out of him, dragged him behind a car, uh, drowned him, killed him. Um, we're still going for it. Is he a truck? Is he young? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They dragged him uh, and they killed him. And then his mother uh, did, an, did an open casket funeral so people could understand what happened. And of course, the people who killed him got off. So, uh, so watch this now. So Emmett Till's been long dead, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's Trayvon Martin. That's Tamir Rice. That's Sandra Bland. Okay, I don't know who that brother is. That's Ahmaud Arbery. That's Michael Brown. That's Atalia Jefferson. That's Breonna Taylor. And that's Jesus and Nazareth. Okay, so right there, all those people that you just saw, with the exception <laughs> of Jesus, are dead. Okay? Mm -hmm. So when you say, why couldn't God give us evidence every generation... The reason is twofold. One, faith is a matter of uh, volition just as much as it is cognition. And two, you can always have deniability. Right? So I, so I could say, bro, Jesus rose from the dead. You go, how do you know? I'm like, he's right there. Look. You can come up with a million reasons to explain how that wasn't him, right? I could say <laughs> he had a twin brother named Joe who looks exactly <laughs> like him. How could you disprove it? Or, or David, he, he did a magic trick. You know, that's another, uh, like yeah, I brought yeah. that one up earlier. Yeah, you can come up with a million reasons for 
anything. Right. Honestly. Honestly. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so if I don't want to believe that Jesus rose from the dead, there is no amount of evidence that you could show me. Right. Because what I'll do is I'll come up with some reason to explain why it's not that. And you can always do that. I mean, hell, I can get really desperate and say, look, this is a extraterrestrial being who understands what our perception of God is. And so they're doing this so that they can enslave the entire human race to their alien race. Mm -hmm. How can you <laughs> say I'm wrong? Right, you right. See? So yeah. the whole question, why doesn't God do that over and over and over and over again? I would answer it that way. I would say, look, there is enough circumstantial evidence that a reasonable person would have to admit that something singular, not just weird, supernatural, something singular that has never happened before or since happened with Jesus. Okay? So the reason I brought up the Tacitus thing was not to say that's definitive proof. The reason I brought it up is to say the the faith of the New Testament is not, you know, there's a big difference when you're reading Lord of the Rings, right? Which is talking about heroes who come together to destroy an evil government versus reading about the American Revolution, which is heroes who come together to destroy an evil government, right? Both right, of right, them right. are talking about, but but there's a different flavor when you're reading a historical narrative versus a fantasy narrative. And what I'm saying is, when you can align perfectly the timeline in Acts 7 and Acts 8 with, with secular historians who are hostile to those people, I would say, okay, that is a sort of indicator that we're not dealing with Frodo here. Something else is going <laughs> on, is what I'm saying. You see what I mean? Right, right. Mm -hmm. Give me a second. What's up, Yara? I'm sorry? I can hear Joey. Yeah, go ahead. Just don't bump the camera, little bro. Come around this way, bro. Say hi to the people. I want to see you. This is my buddy. Hmm? Can you see Ricky the atheist? Huh? Is he the atheist? <laughs> Ask the man his name. Holy moly. What's your name? Uh, atheist. Atheist. Is <laughs> you say hello? Yeah. Hi. You're, saying, you're gonna say hello to me? Oh, you your father? I came in to hang out with you. This is how you greet me? What? Greet me properly. All right. My name's Mark, though. <laughs> My name's Mark. I'm gonna sit down. Weirdo. Interrupted my conversation. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So, so here, here's what here's what I'll say. Uh, so they didn't have YouTube back then, right? Mm -hmm. And we know that if there was a videotape bodily resurrection, you and everybody else would still have deniability for that, right? So what yeah, would I mean, be, what would what would constitute evidence for you that the resurrection event happened? Uh, it's not that I require a resurrection to be true. Uh, it's uh, like that's something that's past and done, right? Um, I guess something different, something like I don't know. Um, uh, appearing on 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 earth like in all holy glory and saying hey guys it's true i'm here i exist you know kind of thing and you know something that is um well it would be again that faith aspect that i have to put okay there this is something huge you know obviously couldn't have been made by anything man related like it or like say for instance the sky split open with a bright light or something and something descended and, simulation and, theory, oh, bro. Yeah. Simulation well, theory. It, it, even if that was true, even if even if that was the case, right? I would say what is behind the biblical story is now in question. But the biblical story I now believe in. Whether it was because, a simulation or something else. Because the sky does opened it, up. Because well, the sky opened up and you know, basically doing something beyond that we could humanly do ourselves or replicate or anything like that that would uh does it, basically does it follow that that would be a god couldn't i just say that's just alien technology that we're not conversing with yet because they're so beyond that's that's not that's not what i'm saying i'm not saying that that would prove that god exists it would prove that uh whatever that was basically made the biblical story uh, to the humans, whether 
Why? The humans who wrote down the biblical stories were true or not, or you know, it would be again a how, leap of faith in how, believing that that well, being would. Well, right. How how would that indicate that he's the author of the biblical story? I could just simply say, no, nah, bro, that's that's just an alien who understands our ancient superstitions, and so he's he's parting the sky and claiming he did that to enslave the human race. How could you argue against that? Um, I couldn't. Okay, so it would just still come down to faith. Yeah, I know, like we discussed before, it all does. Uh, but it's the degree of reliability to each person. Like like you were saying earlier, uh, that that choice of what is and is not true, the truth is it depends on each person individually, um, right? For me, um, I just need a degree of reliability that I'm like, okay, that makes sense, but it, it moves the goalposts in different ways, which is a logical fallacy in itself. But, um, yeah. you know, yeah, it's uh, my, my belief in something depends on, you know, like you can give me a, a evidence of something and it's not going to domino effect for me. It's going to be, all right, you've proven the one thing. The other stuff I'm still in doubt about, but I might give you the benefit of the doubt. Uh, in certain areas how can you do you believe that we can have certainty about anything uh no i don't so think then, there's a possibility so then what does the term proof even mean in that in that epistemology um it's uh uh reliability so for instance with science and a lot of things physics for instance if we can uh always replicate like say we take a formula like uh uh, like physics saying, if I hit this with this, it will always turn into that. And no matter how many times you try, it will always happen that way. Um, obviously, it's still going to take a certain degree of cert uh, faith in that because there might be that one time you never know someday after you're dead that it actually doesn't do it. Right. Bruce but, and Russell talked about this in the induction problem, right? Yeah. So you, you just, if you can replicate, uh, that is the most reliable I think about reliability. Is it something I can rely on? Are you certain um, you can rely on it? Um, no, because there's no certainty. Um, I Isn't don't believe in any kind statement? of statement. <laughs> uh, this is circular. <laughs> this is a circular logic here. Um, uh, but well, if you say there's no certainty, that's a certain statement, isn't it? Um, I'm not certain that there's no certainty, but I believe there is no certainty. Okay. There we go. So Okay, okay. So there are instances in which there can be certainty then. Um, that would be the logical ramification of what you just said, right? There's a possibility, yes. Are you certain? I believe there's a there possibility. Is a po no, I believe there is one. <laughs> are you certain that you believe there's a possibility? <laughs> um, hey, I'm, I'm, uh, not, I'm not playing a game here. here. Here's what I'm doing. Here's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. and, and please don't be offended. Uh-huh. But okay, let me make this statement, and then I'm gonna ha I'm gonna try to have you invalidate the statement. Let's do it that way. Okay. okay. Romans one says we all know the truth, but we're suppressing the truth in unrighteousness because we want to live the way we want to live. I'm sure you've heard that a million times, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then I would say a person who says there's no such thing as certainty is demonstrating the truth of Romans 1 because they don't really believe that. Because there is no way to communicate in the world unless there's an assumption of certainty. So that's the mm -hmm. argument. So now falsify. Uh, well, first off, I would say, you know, I believe Romans 1 was written by humans. So, and came up with by humans. So whether or not, you know, I, I would just say that Romans thing is uh, irrelevant to the conversation. Well, it's not um, relevant because it doesn't matter whether a god wrote it, an alien wrote it, or a human wrote it. What right. I'm gunning for is the truth value of the statement. So yeah, I mean, falsify that statement based on your epistemology. I can't. Okay, that should bother you, shouldn't it? No. I can't fal Just because I can't falsify something doesn't mean it's true. Okay, so you're making a statement that you don't believe certainty exists. Correct. Now, are you certain that you believe that you don't believe certainty exists? No. So then that means that it's possible that you do believe it, right? 
Correct. Are you certain of that? No. <laughs> okay, so the grounding understanding that you have of knowledge is inherently self-contradictory. Isn't that true? Uh, I think uh, that, I, again, I believe that's true for everybody, but I'm not certain of that. <laughs> Here's what I'll say is true of everybody. At the ground level, everybody's reasoning is circular, but mm -hmm. there is one epistemology that is self-contradictory and another one that is inherently consistent. That's the difference between me and you. So both at the ground level, both of our epistemologies are circular. The issue is yours contradicts itself, mine doesn't. Right. Uh, and so it's, you don't see a problem with that at all. No, I, I just think it's because I can't prove it. And because I don't think, well, it's because not that, I'm human. Well, no, there's a difference between proof, right? Which again is impossible mm -hmm. from your worldview. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between proof and a logical contradiction, right? If I say, if I say Dorian, uh, uh, Dorian says, dad, we made a million dollars on Amazon. He could prove that. He could show me his bank account. Holy shit, you have a million dollars. We don't, uh, but inshallah. <laughs> um, but he could prove that, right? Mm -hmm. But if I say I found a square circle, now that's impossible to prove. I've just, this is a separate category. Now we're in the category of logical contradiction. You see the difference between proof and a logical contradiction? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so your worldview is inherently contradiction at the, contradictory at the base level. Mine isn't. Um, They're both circular. Right. But yours is contradictory. Mine isn't. Uh, sh sure, yeah. Um, I think that's and, a problem. Yeah, I just think it's um, uh, because I don't know. You know, and uh, again, I'm comfortable with that. Um, you know, that's that's the that's whoa, the consistency. Whoa, 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 well, hold on, I want to I want to challenge you a little bit. I want to challenge you a little bit. Okay. You're saying you don't know in regard to the God question, but I'm not asking the God question right now. What I'm asking about is your epistemology. So right. You're not saying you don't know. What you're saying is you don't believe certainty exists. Um. And I, that based I, okay. Assertion well, I, is inherently contradictory. Well, I, I, I don't believe we can be certain. Not that certainty doesn't exist, because there is a truth. There is some form of truth, something, but we can't necessarily know what it is. It still doesn't help you. Do you right. know that you believe that for certain? Um, I mean, yeah, I, I know that I believe that. Okay, yes. so then there are certainties that we can apprehend then. Right, yeah. I, I mean... You know, I, I, it comes down to, I believe because I, I believe that because I believe that I, you know, it's, I believe that they're, you know, it's a truth. I truly believe that we can't be certain in anything. Right. And are you certain uh, that you truly believe that? Yes. So then that is a certainty that, you know, then. Um, so I guess, yeah, that we can, I, I guess we have to define what certainty is then, right? Um, so I guess it depends on what the definition of certainty is. Certainty is having knowledge that is 100% in line with absolute reality. Uh, okay. Um, I guess, you, uh, how do you prove that to yourself? Well, you're, I'm talking about your epistemology, right? I'm not talking about right. justifications for epistemology. I'm just asking what you're at the base level, what is your theory of knowledge? Do you believe that we can have certainty? Um, I do not believe we can have certainty. And do you, uh, are you certain that you don't believe that? Um, I, you can't be certain on that. So, so you're, you're not certain whether or not you believe we can have certainty. Correct, because that would make a paradox and that can't happen. Are you certain it would make a paradox and that paradoxes can't happen? You see, um, hey, my, look, look we, we're, we're going to do this to infinity. My, my point is, I, I'm just challenging you because uh -huh. if you have a grounding epistemology that is inherently self-contradictory, then wouldn't it follow and stand to reason that your, your 
apprehension of reality would be by definition skewed? Oh, absolutely. Okay. So I, I, I would just say, I would just say, I think, I think you need to ditch that epistemology because it's inherently self-contradictory. It doesn't work in um, the real world. Yeah, I mean, it's. It, it, I believe it's. Uh, again, I believe it's a limitation of the human brain. Um, I mean, you can, is a limitation of the human brain, but not. So that, that is true. Um, I don't know. Uh, how how is something certain to you? Oh, that's simple, right? You, you know, uh, Plato's man in a cave. Mm -hmm. Right, everybody's in the cave. Everybody's all dark. Whatever, whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. So the analogy I use all the time is you're you're in a room with an elephant, but you are blind. You are born blind, and all the lights are off. Mm -hmm. You will never know what you're dealing with, unless somebody from outside the room with sight can give you sight and turn on the lights. Then you can know what you're looking at. So okay. My epistemology is there has got to be an external source of revelation for us to apprehend truth. And since we do believe in certainty, then that necessitates that there's somebody outside the room. Because I don't, uh, I, I'm going to, I'm going to throw something out really provocative. I don't believe that um, at the base level, people truly believe that it's impossible to have certainty. I don't believe that. I, I do believe that human beings are, including myself, and it's happened in my life a trillion times, I do believe that human beings are incredibly capable of self-deception because I've seen it in my own life and I've seen it, we, we're seeing it in the COVID crisis where people uh -huh. literally die due to their self-deception. Uh -huh. You got people literally, you know, the worst, well, not the, well, there has been a couple really bad ones for me anyway, um, there was this girl, she had severe asthma, so she was kind of on the red list, right? Because it's a respiratory mm -hmm. issue. And these, God, these people in this church held this giant sleepover three months into the pandemic. And it wasn't one of these God will protect us things. It was this right wing bullshit, blah, 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 blah. Now this girl is dead. They buried this little girl, right? Mm -hmm. So... I have seen over and over again in my life and the life of other people, the human capacity for self-deception. So when a person says, I don't believe in certainty, I don't believe that they believe that ultimately. And the reason for that is, is because if you review this conversation, you will see that you have made a ton of statements that assume certainty. fair um it's i think it's um the definition of it that is um what is your definition of certainty um i, I kind of almost define it as something unreachable uh so uh i i almost make it equivalent to omniscience um you know that you know for a fact uh, there, there is no room for doubt. Uh, there's not even beyond reasonable doubt. There is absolutely no possible doubt. What does your um, shirt say? Black Sabbath. No, it says corn. I mean, does that work? Do you believe that? That there is some doubt that it says corn and not Black Sabbath? I mean, there is a... I guess there is always. I'm not talking about like Mark the philosopher, right? I'm talking about Mark the Homo sapien. Me and you right. are talking. Do you mm -hmm. believe? Do you doubt at all that your shirt says Black Sabbath instead of corn? Um, no, I don't doubt it. Uh, I mean, is there any part of you that doubts that that shirt says Black Sabbath and not corn? I suppose not. Uh, I guess. Um, the only other doubt could be if this reality is a uh, an illusion <laughs> you know like but outside of that uh i mean in whatever reality is i suppose that would be the definition of reality so i guess that could be 
uh, a certainty of something that cannot be contradicted, I guess would be a great. Okay. Uh, so then have you just changed your epistemology? I suppose. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, it, so I guess it, it just moves the definition that I had, I, I suppose like a, it, it made it more clear. It's making it more clear to me, you know, sure. like the, you know, of that thought process, that thought sure. experiment, but um yeah, I I've, I've, I think everybody has done this throughout their life, has sat and thought about these things, right? Yeah. Well, um, I think you have. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think, um, because I could tell that you're an honest, introspective thinker. I could tell. And I, I appreciate every, that. <laughs> everybody can tell, right? By the way, mm -hmm. people are like enamored with your tree. And I guess it's because it's March and you still have a fucking Christmas tree up, bro. Because <laughs> uh, we're, I'm lazy. Uh, <laughs> 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 <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. So, uh, would you be willing to have a second conversation? Uh sure, absolutely. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to have a, a be a be a friend of the channel uh, in that aspect. And by the way, you guys have reviewed. Uh, a song for me already and i'm excited for when you guys review the next two so um what's the song you did the uh, you did the first light bearer one prima oh. prime prima movements uh, so, yeah sorry gave the 11 to it uh, I was, which I is was just, i was just gonna say i'm like sorry's gonna freak out when she knows that i was talking to the light you're like a celebrity bro holy shit <laughs> Yeah, uh, she. Uh, so I, I think back in January. No, I forget. Well, yeah, I think it was January. I sent in for the two new Light Bearer songs. So, um, what, what's interesting about the Light Bearer is that obviously it's the story of Lucifer from a different perspective. And I'm not. I don't even believe in that. But I, I think it's an amazing story. It's an interesting story. Um, uh, you know, everybody loves the underdog, right? Um, <laughs> uh, so he's like the uh, ultimate underdog. Hey, remember the light bearer one that you gave an eleven? I'm talking to the guy right now. Oh, Say hi. The light bearer. What? Light bearer. You gave it an eleven. This oh. is this is my guy. Hey. Right. Whoops. Hello. Hey, what's up? Hi. <laughs> uh, Dorian shows up and he's like, uh, I was like, hey, talk to my friend. And Dorian's like, are you an atheist? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Convert immediately. <laughs> Did you, did you come back? Yeah. Do I smell my Taco Bell? Is that I Taco Bell? Taco bean soup. Do you want some? Oh, uh, I'll be real kids. I told you it would be good. All right, get out of here. You, be you better get have taco here. fries. You better have the nacho fries. Some man tried to talk to me at Walmart. <laughs> Who? He Some came up and he said, what's your name? Oh my I said, gosh. I thought we were channel and he didn't remember my name. So I said, why are you asking me that? He said, because I want to talk to you. Ugh. I said, well, I don't want to talk to you. So I pulled my phone away. Are you being serious? Mm -hmm. Dorian says, if only dad was there. <laughs> All right, we're back. <laughs> uh, you got nacho fries, right? Yeah. <laughs> Well, she makes this thing called uh, taco bean soup, and it's unbelievable. It's so good. It's now that I think about it, it sounds gross, but I promise you, bro, it's like the best thing in the world. Uh, you guys okay. gotta share the recipe. Well, uh, <laughs> so we're, we're gonna do the we're gonna do your light bearer songs. Yo, do me a favor, little bro. Put light bearer on the board. I wanna do them like back to back. Did you send an email and was like they need to be listened to in order or something like that? Yes. That was you. Okay. Okay. Bro, okay, all right. I'm really, really excited. All right, good. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah. I will. So, so we've we've adjusted our epistemology. That's pretty major. You believe in certainty now. Sure. Yeah. Mashallah. Okay. Uh, so next time we chat, um, let's talk about some of the ramifications of that. Because uh, okay, uh, I wanted I want to give you. Well, both of us. Well, one, I'm going to review this conversation. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and two, I wanted to uh, give you and I both time to think about the ramifications of that. And then we circle back again. Okay. Are you, are you comfortable doing it 
in this format, or do you want to do like a one-on-one? -on -one? Uh, it. I'm fine with either, honestly. Okay. So. Cool. Good. Because I think I think people enjoyed it, um, and you're a really good interlocutor. So I think I think this is going to be fun for people. Yeah. I I, I wanted to have the conversation because um like. I don't think I'm unique, but I, I just don't think uh, my the perspective I have is, it hap, uh, is talked about a lot, right? You know, the being okay with be, not knowing, you know, uh, kind of situation. Because uh, we get a lot of people on the fence that I feel I'm a little bit more on, uh, not wholly in, but uh, a little bit more in that camp. Uh, they're, they, they present their the arguments with too much, uh, too much certainty on, oh, there is no this, there is no that. Uh, when it's like, well, I, I mean, the, the burden of proof nece isn't necessarily on you, but when you say that uh, science doesn't uh, require faith, it, I, I think you guys didn't have the definition of faith discussion first, because your definition of faith and the other person's might be completely different, and that's why you're not connecting. And that's why I wanted to have define that first, right? Before we continue. No, down I thought to that I, I knew exactly, and and I was like, yes, I found a uh, a compatriot uh, because I felt mm -hmm. like that a lot of times <laughs> it's funny. I was having a we call it a discussion with Sori, and I was like, okay, 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 let's define our terms here. <laughs> like, I, just, <laughs> I just think that's so important for a discussion. I really yeah, do. oh, absolutely. Um, Absolutely. That's, that's why people, you know, talk past each other and all the rest of it. Uh, I'm going to send you a cert anyway. Uh, Vinitsori at gmail.com. Send me uh, your address. I promise you I'm not trying to, like, stalk you in Google Maps or whatever. Uh, I, I I believe that. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have, me an email I have faith that you wouldn't do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll get you a shirt. I'm assuming you want a Sorry Seeker shirt. You don't want a Middle America shirt. Nobody cares about my channel. Sure. I, I mean, either one, I'd be more than happy. So. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, Mark with the, of the Christmas tree, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Rest in peace, ears, because I just maybe, destroyed my ears. Maybe next time it will be down, uh, but I, it most likely won't be. So. Hey, somebody asked, <laughs> what video game is playing in the back? Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. Holy shit! Somebody called it. Ben Webb <laughs> called it. He's like, I think it's Red Dead Redemption. Holy moly. <laughs> Jambi, I am not Jesus. I think I blew out Jambi's uh, eardrums there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Much love to you, big homie. We'll chat soon. Yep. Send me your email with all that info, 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 so that we can send you the gear and then we can coordinate the next time on the phone. Uh, side which chat. email? The merch email? No, 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 no. no. Vinatoria at gmail.com. Okay. Gotcha. Yep. Hey, Taya Black Rose in the house. Okay, buddy. Much love to you. Have a good one. Bye. Peace. Holy moly, we're able to accomplish the impossible. Is that my chest? I'm going to fulfill Raz al Ghul's destiny. No, that's uh, that was my buddy Mark. Um, did you get any uh, updates on the suppressions? No. No. Excellent. I've been watching your thing. You've been what? I've been watching the thing. What thing? Are you serious? The fine thing. The fine? Oh, did you do it? Did you do it three times? No. I told you to do it three times. How many times have you done it? Just once? Yeah, well, a little bit. Get back in the mines! Get back in the mines! <laughs> Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Blah, 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 blah. I took off my headphones. I don't know if you guys can hear me or not. <clears throat> the Thing is a great movie. Yeah, okay, okay. I'm a bit quiet because I'm too loud. I've never been accused of that before. Okay, what about now, losers? Get back in the mines. Okay.
I should be I should be uh, better for y'all. He's got nerd swag. His girlfriend is like 250 and probably plays Smash Brothers. Her other hobbies include weed eating and Googling dead people. That is his type. All right. There you go. Of course. Of course. Ben Webb being Ben Webb. What can you do? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> Vid needs to be more like a Nigerian woman. Louder! <laughs> Hey, hey, Steve. St by the way, Steve, uh, Steven, who I'm, I'm never. Uh, oh my God, Ben was not too far off. Holy shit! How he does it, I have no idea. When, when Ben, when Ben becomes a Christian, people are gonna immediately try to make him a prophet. <laughs> um, Stephen, Stephen is going to be. Uh, you got wrong that she's 250 pounds, Ben. Um, which if she was 250 pounds, um, obviously, you know, there's concern for her health, but we love her anyway. Um, uh, Stephen Armoir, I, I never pronounce his name properly and I don't even know why he's still my friend, but, um, Stephen is, uh, going to be actually the first voice that you hear in the new song that we're, that we're doing. So it's pretty cool. And there's going to be a guest appearance by someone that you guys are all very, very familiar with. <clears throat> so there's that. Open the door. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Oh, what's going on? You want a hug? Okay, excellent. Excellent. I'm a very popular man in this home. Hmm? I saw that part. What part? I was talking to you. Oh, you did, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love you. Bye. Hey, we still have that thing. Mm -hmm. Our 15 minute meeting. I did not forget. Okay. Loves. Bye. <clears throat> hey, Dan. Dan, uh, I really, really like your little avatar there. That's pretty cool. Um, I want to do something with that thing. That's pretty cool. Yo, it's a broccoli from Veggie Tales. <laughs> that my daughter, Ben, that you just said she's a broccoli from Veggie Tales? Do Christians understand that Lucifer is a love of Christ? Sever separation makes misunderstanding. Um, John, I am certain that um, if you're referring to Lucifer as like the devil, then I'm certain you're wrong. <clears throat> love is beautiful yes larry love is beautiful um larry are you okay larry if i uh actually no i'm not gonna ask you that over over this i will shoot you an email no shoot you a text Check your, check your text, Larry. Uh, 10 minutes, guys. Do you have a call in line? Do you have a call in line? I'd love to be on the channel and see how I match up to the almighty prowess of Vin. Uh, I do have a call in line. Um, I'm not pretty sure. Um, I'm not sure about the, the, all, the supposed almighty prowess of, uh, of Vin, but... You know, I do have a call. I actually thoroughly enjoyed this conversation between you two, Vin. Greetings from Nola once again. Thanks, Ben Shaw. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Mark is uh, uh, smart as hell. <laughs> smart as heaven, inshallah. Uh, obviously. Um, but, uh, you know, it's one of those things where, like, you know, I wrestle Johan. You know, like, there's a video of me and, me and uh, Dorian going at it with the MMA. And I kind of, like, you know operate at like 15 percent so that it'll be like somewhat of a fun conversation and that's pretty much what you saw with me and mark <laughs> he was being extremely gracious to your brother <laughs> for sure uh yeah <clears throat> 10 minutes 10 minutes are we going to have a live stream where you just listen to the spirit box suggestions yeah yeah yeah, yeah. we're gonna have a dedicated live stream to Spirit Box. We're also going to have a dedicated live stream to 
I'm not gonna say right now. And we also have uh, a movie feature. We spent about three hours working on our movie feature. Um, that is gonna be really interesting. <clears throat> we're we're just trying to step up the inter the interactivity of the of the channel and not really focusing on. Yeah, yeah. So so yeah, that all all that stuff is coming, inshallah. Are we gonna do grunge anytime soon? Yes, is Web Week coming soon? See, Web Week is interesting. I'm almost wondering, guys, if you guys would want to see that done live, Web Week. Oh my gosh. I was on there, the kids saw Ben Webb's rude comment about Dorian's hair. They were like, what? That was about Zoe's hair, I'm pretty sure. Nope, it said Dorian. Really? The Chia Pet. Oh, yeah, yeah, he called Dorian a Chia Pet and he said that Zoe was like the broccoli from Veggie Tales. <laughs> and you're going to give him a week? Oh, it's Ben. Is your typical way of parenting? He's it's like ben. He's a little spoiled child. Well, I mean, you know, that's the world they're going to inherit. People aren't just going to be uh, moo moo foo foo with them. You know what I mean? Hi, Goth Mom. What's up, Lori Poo? You know that, that thing that, that. Hi, Zonia. Uh, that thing we put up on Patreon, somebody was asking, like, have we ever considered, uh, like, gaming? Yeah, I know. I saw that. Is there a way you can send money on, on PayPal to get you guys to do a song reaction? Uh, Black Satan 68 I... <laughs> 68. <laughs> he was born in 1968. <laughs> Maybe. I just thought 69 was taken up. <laughs> Black Satan. <laughs> oh, my gosh, man. I Shoot, swear. there's no 69. Let me switch yeah, that to 68. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> what, babe? Black Satan 68? Hey, listen, can you get this guy? <laughs> it's my information. Mark, send him an email and say uh, the size, his size for him and his girl. We're sending him a shirt. What's up, Ruth? Ruth in the house? Yeah, Mark. Mark, do us a favor and 96 is a disgruntled couple. <laughs> Mark, do me a favor. Send the the size and uh, for you and your girl. So you, you're both getting shirts for that amazing discussion. So there you are, dear listener. Mm. Uh, yeah, if... Okay, so I... Ruth, I said we were going to be gone in 10 minutes, but we, we'll, let, we'll do a song um, if it's you. So... Uh, let us know when the thing, if you, if your thing hits PayPal in the next 10 minutes, then, uh, Sori and I will do the song because Sori's back. So I thought she was going to be in the kitchen where she belonged as a good Christian woman, but, uh, <laughs> trying to get a reaction from someone. The website has been in development for a year. It's never getting done. Thanks for asking me. <laughs> 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 that is such a horrible human being. 96 is when you go to bed drunk and your wife doesn't want to smell your beer breath. So she lays the opposite direction on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Did that really happen or are you just fucking me? Well, well, right. No, it really Say happened. Valani. Valani really happened. The white or black? What do you Black, think? obviously. <laughs> fucking... I felt a little bit bad for saying, I don't want to talk to you because it felt like really rude and mean, but like I was on the fly. I didn't know what I, I'm like, I have like this, like stacks of Vienna sausage that I was like, you know what? The kids will like Vienna sausage. I got a bunch of Vienna sausage and I had like two things of formula. I'm like, I clearly have a bunch of children. A medium and a large. <laughs> I clearly have, I guess I just look like a mom. Probably. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. And I should have told him. Can you just? I don't. Want I, don't need, I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear. Put your I, mask I don't want to hear about him anymore. Just <laughs> do me a favor and get this kid his shirts, please. Hey, hey, hey! hey. Why are you getting so keyed up? Troll, but honest. 
Used to be a fan, then I realized you guys are sellouts for asking for so much money from your fans for doing reactions. I, I don't, I don't have fans. We don't have fans for one. For two, <laughs> you can listen to anything on the channel for free. <laughs> if you want to tell us what to do, then you have to pay us. And three, <laughs> three, this is our primary source of income, sir. So uh, uh, if you, <laughs> if you work for free, yeah. please let us know. Yeah, I was gonna say, by all means, tell us this free work you do. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us how you pay your bills yep. and such. But <laughs> hey, I, I don't want anybody to say anything mean to troll but honest. Don't say Wait. anything mean to him. Oh, that was in the comment section? Hey. Oh, I thought it was like in the comment section on your no, phone. No, no, no. I didn't realize uh, it was I should, here. I shouldn't have should done it. I know. I didn't think I you would do such a thing. I shouldn't have done it. Shout out to Mike Murphy. Okay, shout out to you. Uh, yeah, so don't don't jump on that guy. No, no, don't do, don't do such things. Uh, if Start I recall designing. correctly, you believe in penal substitution. What are your thoughts on other theories of atonement, such as Christus Victor? Do you think Christus Victor can complement PSA? Yeah. Um, okay, I'll wait. Pause. Mark, we need to know. I'm going to be uploading that other design probably tonight or tomorrow. Should I hold off on ordering? No. Or just put the Sorry Secret one? No. Just send him the Sorry Secret one. But if when the other design comes, we'll send him another one too. Oh, yeah, I know who he is. Yeah, oh, yeah, so you know who he is. Yeah, yeah. So as soon as the other design comes, we just send it to him. So he gets four shirts. I don't Holy. care. Holy. Well, we're going to have more than one conversation, so just send him everything. The only thing I ask, Mark, is uh, once or twice take a picture, huh? So we can feature you on the channel. <coughs> okay, was that? Oh, he's, yeah, he said, he said, he said, he said one medium, one large, I think he said. Okay. Yeah, one medium, one large. And then you, you saw his uh, address, right? Mm, yeah. Can you pull it back up? Yeah. Oh, I see what you did there. You guys are too gracious. Oh, I thought you did that on purpose. <laughs> you should have kept it there. <laughs> I mean, what's wrong with being a sellout? Well, on that note, boys and girls, speaking of selling out, let's see here. We got to talk about sellouts here. Do you know what's about to happen? I'm you, actually not paying attention. Do you know what's I'm about to happen? Do you know what's about to happen? No. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What did the Chicago Bears just do? Where was that? They address, signed huh? Andy Dalton. Holy moly. <laughs> Andy Dalton is the solution. <laughs> Shout out to Andy Dalton. All right. Um, so, guys... Somebody just called us. That's pretty crazy. Look at this. What? If you click on that, that's what pops up. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Hmm. Okay. Uh, can you bring up his information again? Somebody so just can... somebody just called us sellout. So we got to play a song. We got to play a song for uh, this brother who called us a sellout. Okay. <laughs> Give me that address, babe. <laughs> right there. Uh, no, that's pencil art. No, right there. Subhanallah, and this guy's saying he's not—he's not Arab. Okay, all right. Um, okay, guys. So we've got a song uh, for our friend who called us a sellout. <laughs> uh, let us know if you can hear it. <clears throat> Hold on, let me see. Can I hear it? Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Huh? Huh? Deep, deep, deep. Here, here, here. <laughs> I'm so hungry. Remember the tools on? Fuck oh, yeah. you, buddy. Fuck <laughs> you, buddy. <laughs> I can't hear anything yet. Don't worry about it, bitches. You will hear it in short order. In short order. Ding, 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 ding. Listen. Okay, so I don't know why I want to say this address out loud so badly. Why? Is it like a funny address? No, it's just because you're not supposed to do that. Oh, yeah, you like, so you I like, you like docs like 15 people in our community. Yeah, but like, a lot of times shit. I do it accidentally. This time I'm having a hard time not doing it on purpose. You're literally, 
I ain't Arab. I know, the worst person. Why are you denying who you are? <laughs> he keeps saying he's Arab. He keeps saying he's Arab. Slipknot are one of the world's most average bands. They got popular because they dress up like rejected Scooby Doo monsters and write funny songs about teeth angst despite being in their 40s. They were not in their 40s when they first started writing, Ben. You dumb butt. God almighty. Ben is such a dumb butt, I swear. He just enjoys being a dumb butt. Don't you think? Hmm? You know what? What? This this would work. You know this design that like everybody does the this the keep calm. Yeah. Keep calm and vin it would work too. Keep calm and vin it. V i n it. Really? Oh, somebody's calling you. You got a fan. No, oh, that's Red Cindy. <clears throat> vin, could you show us your guitar? Could I show you my guitar? Uh, here's one of them. You guys should do Paradise Lost. Okay. I just came up with this song. Uh... <laughs> I'm out of tune because somebody let the two-year-old come in my room. Our marriage is doomed because you won't stop letting this little brat come. When he wakes you up. Oh my. Oh no, I like when he does that. Go wake up, Daddy. Daddy? Book? Book. When he walks in. Book? Boys book. Super book. So that's my uh, guitar. Is that a Martin? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. That's actually my guitar. Huh? That's actually my guitar. But, uh... Vinny basically took it from me because I never play it. You do play it. Not anymore. When do I have time to do that? I just came up here for five minutes. They're already calling me on FaceTime. Who does that? Who FaceTimes their own parent? <laughs> oh. Mom, stay. Stay with us down here, Mom. Stay, stay. It's so dramatic, too. It's like you work from home. They're homeschooled. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, Lord, let my children get tired of me, please. I'm gonna say, let them die. No, let them get tired of me. Let them just get bored of me, straight bored. Okay, so I'm trying to. Oh, here he is. All right, here you are. I'm attaching. There you go, Mark. I'm sending you an email. Screenshot. Okay. Just get used yes. to it, Vin. What's her yours is hers. What's hers is hers. We do review unsigned Amen. bands. Amen. Amen. It's called unsigned hype. Unsigned hype. Uh, we do do unsigned bands. It's called unsigned hype, and uh, because we're sellouts for a small fee of uh, three hundred dollars, we can review your band. Unsigned hype. Yeah. That's a cool name. Yeah, I didn't come up with that. The source is a hip hop magazine. Yeah. And they used to have this segment called Unsigned Hype. And all they did was just put the verse of uh, an unsigned rapper. Mm -hmm. And they would put the verse down there. So you could read the verse and be like, holy shit, this guy's nice. Okay, so we're going to change the name of that tier? Yeah. Unsigned Hype. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so hungry right now. <sighs> uh, you are not hungry. You are just greedy. In fact. And you're rude. <laughs> rude! I'm going to have to go back to the line. Vin, if one of your children committed suicide in the future, would you change your belief in God the Sky Fairy? Well, Travis, considering that my mother and my mother-in-law left the earth that way, um, yes, I would still believe in God, my um, magic sky fairy or whatever you called it. So, Travis, you, you must be in some significant pain, my brother, and I'm very, very sorry for that. Um, but, you know, Jesus said to one of his best friends, it is hard for you to kick against the goads. <clears throat> K. 
Can I use that as the name for my non-existent band that I'm never going to form? <laughs> Gotham is yours, sir. Go do it. <clears throat> I'm literally... Shout out to the homie Travis. Listen, for everyone, when you see somebody going out of their way to be crazy and belligerent and inconsiderate and say horrible things, your initial instinct is go, man, fuck that guy, fuck that girl. But listen, everybody is in a ton of pain and people handle their pain in all types of different ways. And sometimes you have to look beneath what people are saying and why they're saying it to understand what's going on with them. So... I would just say it that way. That's why it went straight to Vimeo. Oh, because of the app I've integrations. And you also connected it to Discord. Yeah. I did that stuff a while ago. Do you realize palm muting is cheating? Oh. <laughs> uh, I don't think palm muting is cheating if you're trying to make that sound. Is the proof of God that Vin is with Sori considering she's well out of his league? Thank you. I've been saying that for millions of years. Who said that, Ben? That's why I didn't time them out. R right, right, Z. And that's why that's why you're a moderator. Ooh, yes! The link for Evanescence. Hold on. Did you send it to me? Hey, hey, uh, uh, Z, uh, Amy, do me a favor. Um, hey, Ninth Hydra! I think Travis actually asked an honest question. You guys are overreacting. Very, very possible. Very, very, very possible. Ninth Hydra in the house. Uh, no, Travis can't go to hell. I don't want Travis to go to hell, and I don't think he will. There's a reason for everything. And um, I, think, I think with most trolls, that if we sat down and talked to them, and they shared oh. what happened in their lives, and we'd have a lot more understanding for why they are the way that they are. So, that's what I'd say. Yes, post it, and then I'm going to put it in the superscript here, and, and uh, I want to shoot a commercial for it, Amy. Look at this. I really want to push that. This is interesting. There's different plans. I never knew about that. I wonder what this premium one has. Which one are we on? We're on the 5%. Is, is this... This is our current is plan. Is this Patreon itself? Yeah. Oh. That's but this is them taking a more of a percentage of... They take a higher percentage, but I don't know what the premium is. All the tools to master membership plus merch for membership. Yeah, we don't need all that stuff. No, but I don't know what premium has. Maybe it has something that... Um... Just asking because bipolar is genetic. You decided to pass it on anyway, even though you attempted suicide in your life. It's a very cold, satanic thing to do. Okay, so you're the guy that said, Vin knows that there's suffering in the world, and yet he still has children. How could he do that? Especially considering that he's got bipolar, blah, blah, blah. Um, Travis, the reason for that, that's, it's a very, very good question, right? Um, if you know that bipolar is a genetic disorder and, uh, it's, it killed people very important to you, then, um, knowing that, how could you bring other children into the world? Now, if you take the emotion out of it, it's a good argument slash question, Right? And Travis, what I would say to you is, my older brother has, uh, you know, the same generic heritage as myself, obviously. I, you know, descended from my mother. And my older brother is doing a lot of good in the world. And he's alleviating a ton of suffering at, he's willing to lay down his life for people he doesn't know. And I will also say that there have been a few times in my life when I've had a positive effect on people or the surrounding society where I live. And so what I believe is that we are not bound uh, by genetics. I believe we live in a fallen world and that our job is to regardenize the earth. And so I don't believe any of these challenges are going to have the final word. I don't believe that cancer, bipolar, I don't believe that any of these maladies that are common to the human nature are going to have the last word. I believe that love and life is going to have the last word, but that's only going to come through billions of us for thousands of years struggling um, with God and with each other to get there. 
And so um, my job as a parent is to love my kids as much as I can, uh, position them to live a full life as, as much as I can, um, bless them as much as I can, um, show them Christ and show them God as much as I can, and um, pray for them. And I have full and... Uh, <laughs> As my Jewish friends say, perfect faith that God is going, he, he's already done amazing things through my, through my children. And so the other thing, Travis, is life isn't just about me or my kids. There's bigger things happening in the world than me and my kids. God is the one that put those children in their mother's womb. And um, God is ultimately responsible for them. And he's the one that has a plan for them. So that's why I... Um, I continue to have children. We have six, and I'm pretty sure we're probably going to end with about seven or eight, <laughs> inshallah. So that's why. <clears throat> ben, be careful. We are equal partners of this business, and I will block you. Yeah, but I don't block you. No, I keep blocking it. What happened? Isn't your brother a cop? He's probably out there killing black people. For that's fun. not funny. <laughs> I don't even know how you can laugh. That's not funny at all. I... I and everything Ben says is just funny to me. I, I understand. Mm -mm. I'm sorry. It's all right. It's okay. Is there anywhere we can see Vin playing electric guitar? Yes. I'll show you. I'll show you guys a uh, video of Vincent playing the electric guitar. I don't know why people are so interested in me playing guitar. Because they don't think you can I've told, No, I've told them a million times I can't play guitar. So. Yeah, but not play at all. Well, every, anybody can, can play something. We're in a band. Anybody and everybody can Untrue. play something. But, you, you know, I've already told them that. But I, I don't have a problem saying... I mean, guitar is not my thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have a problem saying I'm not good at that. I'll still do it, though. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's not enough for you, huh? I'm, I'm just thinking about Ben's comment. You shouldn't have done it, Ben. <laughs> I mean, and, then, I, and then you pulled that up and that video was playing. Yeah, I, I know. That's, that's that's tough. That's tough stuff. Ben, you shouldn't have done it. <laughs> Apologize to your sister, which he won't. So I'm not even going to tell him to. Yeah, I, I know, I know. He doesn't mean any harm by it, though. He, he just... He, ben has to say, like, the most, like, horrible things. Like, there's something about him where if he's not doing that, then he feels incomplete. And, you know... There you go. What can you do? You can't be mad at him. You can block him. Yeah, please don't block him. And Ever. see, the thing is, you'd be like, where, where, Ben hasn't been around for a while. Uh, I would. I'd be, like, I, I'd be like, where's where's Benji? Where's Benji? Where did he go? All right, let me see. I think I found it here. Can you jump in the chat and uh, make sure our friends are still around? Yeah, I just pulled it up. Okay, can you? Can you... You're still live chatting? Wow. <laughs> People always do that. They're like, wow, uh, they're still chatting. Holy moly. Um, <laughs> ben needs some Zanny music that plays while he makes a joke like that. I don't know what Zanny music is. That's probably something is it like bad. And satanic I don't even know. music I have something? no clue. What did they say? Zanny music? How'd they spell it? Z-A-N-Y, I think. No idea. Zonia will translate for us. Zonia knows everything. Uh, oh, look. Download <sighs> video. Uh, will Vinny know who Robert Johnson is? Do you know who that is? Uh, I don't know who Robert What's Johnson up, is. What's up, Blastroid? Who's Robert Johnson? I don't know. Is Robert Johnson... No, I don't know who Robert Johnson is. There's a product that was on Shark Tank called Chord Buddy for Guitars. Maybe that would help. What is that? Chord Buddy for Guitars? Like what? Oh, like for no people idea. that actually want to be proficient Zanny is like crazy weird. It means wild or crazy, Zonia says. And uh, Lori Poo came in. Let just let it all in said i can play smoke on the water who can't that's what everybody knows how to play that song you dumb butt. okay guys uh anti-natalism is a 100 percent broken philosophy i What's agree happening right now? although although isn't i'm pretty sure zonia is an anti-natalist so why are people talking about parental did i miss something i don't know 
Try to do me. My crew be unruly. Some old school cats that call cats toolies. Call blacks moolies. <laughs> Nine Please Hydra. Smoke, hey, Vin, moolies. I can't wait to talk to you in live chat once I get a laptop, okay? Hope without rubbers, skill the wise and killing wise of grandmothers. Who you trust and shit? When France start busting Respect your France response, awesome. Vin. This is Travis. Don't agree with you bringing sentient life into this world to suffer through. Have you heard of antinatalism? It's a rare philosophy. Yes, I've An heard of I mean anti. I've heard of antinatalism and we've uh, Ruth, we saw your thing, so we're gonna do your song before we leave. I'm just gonna show everybody my uh, my guitar playing. Yes, um, Travis, I, I'm familiar with antinatalism. We actually did a song from an antinatalist and uh, uh, Z explained some antinatalist, you know, thought process and such to me. So Yes, I'm familiar with antinatalism, and I would say if God isn't real, then you're you're right. But since God is real, you're wrong. That's what I'd say. Um, here is uh, all right, guys. Here is Vincent playing uh, electric guitar. Inshallah, if I can find it, where did it go? Okay, you can go here like that. Hi, Ashley. Okay, so <clears throat> I'll wait till that's on. Till it's on there and then let me show that is it there okay boom okay so this is me playing guitar go that's the electric guitar uh no just read it yeah see why is it all like chunky like that see i still haven't figured out those the video yet I don't know. Oh yeah, that is weird. Cause over there, it looks, it, good. It looks perfect. There, there, it's like slow. So I, we still got to figure that part of it out. We got to figure it out quickly. Uh, can they hear us? There's no sound. Is that what they're saying? There's mm -hmm. no sound. Can anyone hear this? Can they hear us? Can who hear us? No volume from the guitar. It's muted. No <laughs> audio on the video. Well, <laughs> are there are there bats on your fretboard? Yeah, that's bats, right? Yeah, those are bats. Yep, bats. Let me hold on. Let me see here. Uh oh. I did something. I think I put the audio through the mic. That's what I did. I did that so that we, me and uh, the homie, could have a conversation. Oh. Good idea. <laughs> Sounds awesome. So mute. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to your rude buddy? Who's my rude buddy? Ben. Uh, I don't know. Quiet now. I don't know. Every everybody uh, everybody jumped on the homie because <laughs> of you. You gave everybody the the uh, the permission to go after poor Ben. Yeah, but there's lines. My God. I think that's terrible. I think you. I think you're. I just think you're a terrible human being. I don't even understand why you had a problem with that guy just asking me my name. Why do you have to bring that up? Nobody even nobody even asked about it. There's no reason to even ask about it. Because all he said was my name. Imagine if he said something equally as rude as Ben does. Ben would never say that to us, you know, like... Ask me my name? In, in like, the real world. So, I don't even know why you say something like that. Okay. Hey, turn that up. Let me see if uh, people you can, can hear you, hear. but no video. I think they can hear that. Turn that up. Let me see if uh, people can hear you, but no video. Oh, well, sorry, guys. Uh, we were going to figure out, uh, you guys were going to be able to see me play or hear me play, but, uh, the gods are against you because we can't, we can't hear it. I was supposed to be showing you Ra's al Ghul's destiny. Hold on. Let me see. Can, I wonder, I wonder, can I even hear it? See, I can't hear it. Weird. I did something with the audio on troll. Ben is crying in the corner. I almost feel sorry. <laughs> I wish Jen was here. Well, we could see Jen, you play. Oh, yeah, I know. Jen, Jen. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Jen and I were supposed to make that plan. to Jen watch so to hates, hates her brother with a passion. It's so bad. Was that a teaser then? <laughs> All right, hold on. Let me say it. Let me try. And then broadcast. I think it's because of broad. Oh, it's broadcast system audio. I guarantee you. Hold on. Let me see. Mm. Does this work? My guarantee was no. Wait a second. I have headphones. Where's my headphones? Let's try these. Uh, no, I still can't hear it. 
Still playing. Oh, okay. There it is. <laughs> Repair, uh, man, 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 man. Uh, no, it's still playing here. Still playing. Oh, okay. There it is. <laughs> Repair, uh, man, 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 man. All right. All right, so we're gonna try it again. So we're gonna. There's always echoing. Okay. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> Repair, man, man, man. I think if I mute it now, I think we'll be okay. All right, guys, let me know if you can hear it now. Hey, babe, let me They're see. They're saying it's looping. Well, yeah, it loops when it does that little echo thing. Ashley, wow, cool, Vin. Okay, let's try it again. Tone is actually. Can you hear it? it? Turn it up. I don't hear anything. Okay, let's try it again. Can you hear it? Turn it up. Nope. <laughs> oh, I know what I need to do. I need to do that and then mute the mic, I think is what it is. All right. Let's try it this way. I know that song. I'm all I know what I need to do. I need to do that and then mute the mic, I think is what it is. All right. Let's try it this way. I know that song. I'm all I know what I need to do. I need to do that and then mute the mic, I think is what it is. All right, let's try it this way. I know that song. I need to do that. Skynet becomes, uh, what's the amp and are there any effects pedals? Uh, I had, uh, I forgot the amp that I used for that one. <laughs> what? what? Uh, Black Satan 68 was born in 68. <laughs> ha! I told you! Ch evil ass. Monster Magnet <laughs> Teenage Warhead. How do you want me to send this to you? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, yeah, it's looping, guys. Well, we'll get we'll get rid of it soon. It'll it'll get rid we'll, we'll get rid of it soon. Um, but uh, that's on that's on uh, Instagram, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. I think so. That little that little clip, that little clip is uh is is on Instagram. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, our, our, our song is coming out soon. So that, that's, that's me at the peak of my playing ability. <laughs> that's the peak of what, of what, of what you're going to get. So <laughs> there's also that. Um, but uh, you know, sorry, sorry is really the star of the band for obvious reasons. So, you know, that's the, I'm, I'm completely secure, honey. Hmm? I'm a loser. I'm a loser. I barely practice. Poor Vivi. I, I've never been able to get into that. You set me up and then I wasn't able to get in. Um, I, I really, really, really want to like hmm? wrestle and... Fight? Yeah. Okay. You want me to show you some stuff? Like show you some, some you get I do. This is what happens <clears throat> every single time. You, you can vouch for me. Vin will say, you want to show you some stuff? Here, we can do some wrestling. And the whole thing, you, you think that this is about to turn into something really fun, right? Nope. What happens is I get in a headlock 
every single time and have to tap out. That's because you keep giving up your head. And I keep telling you. See, the thing keep is. Keep your neck up over the line. You never do it. Sometimes I legit feel like wrestling. So it's guillotine. Sometimes get, I just want to be playful. She gets guillotined all the time. And Vin takes it all next level. See? See how I protected my neck? Then you just put your chin down there. Big your head is. Of course you can do that. It nothing to do with it. It's yes, instinct. it does. It's muscle memory. If I did that, you'd still be able to get me. And so he gets me. I'm like, Vin, oh, you're supposed to be kissing me like this. I'll kiss you after <laughs> when you wake up. <laughs> You've never put me to sleep like that. So rude. Nope. I'm like, tap, tap. Keep your guard up. <laughs> but just put your chin in your attack. It's nothing. You Where are Chip it. and Salty and the others? You know what? Where is Chip? Chip was our guy, man. I know. I guarantee you one of these nasty ass kids took it. I know. He probably. Kids. It probably got sold on eBay. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't even know. I know. <laughs> Dorian would do some shit. Like That's that. what I'm saying. 100%. We're not going to name any names, but. He'd be like, Father, why would I waste it? I said, hey, did you listen to that thing? He goes, yeah, just once. I'm like, I told you to do it three times. Holy shit, we have required Amy, removals I can't here. do that. I need that. <laughs> unsellable product. We've got one unsellable product. What is it? I wonder why. Required removals. I have no idea why. I mean, if it's... Me and my hub play fight, too. He was in the military. <laughs> it's fun. White woman in distress. <laughs> oh, there we go. Taya, I figured it out. It was not a reverb. <laughs> Vid from the future was sent back in time to play guitar with himself. Yeah, there's a Who mode. Yeah, yeah, Dorian mode, Aiden. Yeah, I'm I'm very, very familiar with Dorian mode. It, it wasn't, I don't, I'm not sure if it was um, reverb as much as it was, um... Uh, Vin doesn't know how to, you know. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, oh my god, I'm so hungry. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, oh my god, I'm so hot. I'm like, listen to this. Now. Why, is that what you were thinking? Uh, yeah, I think it all the time. And you know I think it all the time, you freaking loser. Do I know that? You freaking loser. What's up? Hello from, from New Hampshire. Sleeping oh. giant. Sleeping giant. Are you in a band? Yeah. Sleeping giant. You know, I actually Lincoln. had a guy. I actually talked to a guy from Sleeping Giant. Like right at the beginning of the channel, I'm like, oh yeah, we're about to do your 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 song, and he's like, man, y'all ain't gonna do my song. I'm like, nah, nah, bro, for real, we're gonna do your song. And I remember when we used to have the song request on a paper. Oh yeah. I said, nah, bro, I'm I'm looking at it right now. We're gonna do your song. You never did it. We never did the song. <laughs> he's like, y'all ain't gonna do my song. He knew it. He's like, uh, he said something like, I showed your uh, uh, my mom your guys' videos or something like that. Show her that metal isn't. You know, the devil. Look, Vin, real talk. Do you ever get depressed about the decisions that the population at large makes? As much as I want to have maximum re freedom for people, I get depressed about what would happen. No, I, I never I never get depressed about like. If I think on the macro level, I get very hopeful and happy. If I think on the micro level, that's that what is kind of depressing. Mm. I think. The two things that, that that I think about the most as far as that goes, like decisions as a whole, is one, obviously abortion, because you can't, you can't go back and bring back to life all those babies we've already killed, right. and it just keeps happening over and over and over and over. Then the other one is, uh, is actually people dying of starvation. It's really like, it shouldn't happen. Yeah, that one is tough. It's like... Yeah, and obviously when the abortion question comes up, one of the things that really, I don't know if it makes me sad, it gets me angry, is the people on our team who don't want to, you know, shell out any extra money to support vulnerable women mm -hmm. and, you know, help them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. To, and, and, you know, there's multiple ways to skin a cat, but they're like... I know so many girls that wouldn't have had it if, you know, I tell a story all the time oh. about A, how she yeah. wanted the kid, but she was living yeah. at, her boyfriend broke up with her, kicked her out, said he wasn't going to support the baby. Then the then her dad was like, I love you, A, but you've already got two kids and I'm on state assistance. So ba he basically told her, you can sleep in the car this winter with, with the new baby, or you can get rid of it and live with me. 
And if she would have been able to get a government grant for 12 months, I just can't even 12 know. months of housing and some sort of job fair or education program, she would have had that baby. And the fact that we, I'm talking about like evangelical right-wing Christians, the fact that we will not take responsibility for that and say, yeah. we are contributing oh, to absolutely. that. They're like, take care of your own kid, blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, whatever. But like the fact that we won't admit that we're contributing to that and we just want to judge this 18, 19 year old girl who is facing a winter in Maine in her fucking car. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, that really, really gets me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Really, really gets me. Uh, and, and then I look past it and say, well, you know, we're going we're gonna to find some way to improve. But so, yeah, it's odd. Like when I think about abortion as a whole, again, I'm very hopeful. I'm, I'm all, I'm certain that we're going to, <laughs> we're talking about certain, I'm certain that we're going to end it. But the unnecessary suffering of a lot of mm. otherwise, you know, and, it, and, it, it, and it's just weird, right? Like, it comes down to money. <laughs> like, a person's life comes know, down know, to money. Know, it's, like, so weird to me. It's like, if you and say you know you're pro-life, then wouldn't you expend every expense you possibly could to, to help? You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, it's mind-boggling. It's crazy. Yeah, and then instead they say rude things. Yeah, then they say horrible things to the girl, call yeah. her all kinds of names, she call her a whore, blah, blah, blah. It's like, legs. holy shit. Not yeah. to mention, uh, no, no, don't even get me started. But, you know what's so crazy to me about every time I hear you say that story is yeah. that it was the kid's grandparent. I know. I know. Like, I know, I, know I can, I, I don't agree with it, but I can see how people can like, you know, you desensitize or separate yourself from, you know, it's somebody else's kids, somebody else's family. Like, I still think it's sick and it's still troublesome to me. Um, but I can understand how as a matter, like we do that, we, we throw bombs all over the place and we don't think how it's going to affect people's kids. You know what I mean? But like that's something like thing. that, I'm like, fuck. but that's like, that's your grandkid. I know. Like you legit said. But again, I, I, you know how I am with men, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. but at the same time, it's like, this guy is like severely disabled. The father? Yeah. He was, he is severe. She just moved out of his, that's why she was all that. The last time, the last, you know, little thing of times that we had to, you know, like she was stacking up to get out of there because he was just so abusive. Which, of course, he's a disabled guy. It's a two bedroom apartment. She's got two kids and her and him. And, you know, everything was always I get the, you know, whatever. It's the one that you you had me get involved with? Yeah, because she kept. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, well, the last one that we did with her was to get her out of the, mm. and she's in her new apartment now. Of course, her cousin mm. just died. But um, so when I think That's about sad. him, when I think about him, he's a dude in his you know sixties. He's extremely disabled, and he's got a two, one and a half two bedroom apartment. Like he he sleep he slept in the living room. You know what I'm saying? So he did love her and his her kids. It's just. He was looking at like, well, how can we do this? You know what I'm saying? And then that's the other thing is, if when, he would we're have been in able... America, and like, there's so many people that identify as Christian. Like, that should have been so easy. Like, he didn't know what to do. Ask any Christian. Like, if you are a Christian and you follow the teachings of Jesus, that mm. should be an open and shut case. Right. Literally. No, I agree. You should be able to ask any Christian, I agree. and there there should have been help right there. I agree. I agree. Like, so, should, like, that's a major she, fail on the part just, of the church. She, you should be able to say, oh, oh, we'll just walk down to the local church. And, and I asked her, I said, if we were there that day and said, we can help you, would you turn around? She said, absolutely. I would. So, and then she gets called all kind of crazy names and blah, blah, blah. It's just like, wow, bro. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. And she's not perfect. You know she's not perfect. No, she's not we perfect. know her, but... Oh. So if he, if she would have been able to say, yeah, we can go to a local church and they'll give us a 12 month stipend or, oh, don't worry, this will get us another, he would have done it. Like he, he obviously loved his kids. I mean, he, 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 can you imagine living with her? Like I'm sure it was not no walk in the park. And he did that for five freaking years. 
let them stay there. So it's not that he didn't love his own grandkids. He was just looking at it like, yo, like I'm, he, he's living check to check and they, they get a check once a month. I mean, what's a kid supposed to do? You're against abortion, <clears throat> but we're in the war, as far as I understand correctly. If not, I withdraw this question. How does that fit together? The hospital just refused me and my brother from going to see our dad. What the F? Uh, because of COVID. The COVID stuff. Yeah. And his dad's in. I thought he was in hospice, oh, though, Larry. Larry, that's terrible. It doesn't matter. They're not. I've I've seen posts where people are saying that, like. Well, that was a oh, big that's fear. that's painful. That's awful. Hey, Nick, that was a big fear that uh, uh, you had with uh, Raysa because we didn't oh, know. I was so afraid that they were going to take him away from me. I'm like, if I have this baby and they take him immediately to the other room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Tough stuff. Yeah. Tough stuff. Um. So there you go. Oh, no, Vicarious Jambia. We're talking, to, the abortion came up, and he was telling me about some girl that said she would have not gone through with it had someone have said, hey, we'll help you. And I'm like, ugh, if only, you know, yeah, we're we just, had known her back then or other people around her had done the right thing. And just, I think about that a lot, man. I think that's one of the reasons for... Yeah, um, well, that made more sense yeah. once you gave me some context. Yeah. But... It's it's not so much abortion as it is like the early church. Man, they would you, you know the Romans would expose these babies. So the man it was pater familia. So the man ran everything. So the the man could say, yeah, I don't want this kid. Leave him out in the uh, expose him in the uh, in the market square or whatever. And, and Roman law was you had to sit there and let the kid die. Oh, and then terrible. in came Christian women and swooped in and took those babies and baptize them and, and save their lives it's you, like that was their instinct i know their instinct know. wasn't to judge the romans for doing it their instinct was hey this kid's in trouble we need to help i'll tell you what though i actually you you might disagree with me but i actually think that if women were going through with the pregnancy delivering the baby and then dropping it off in the square i think a lot more people would take those babies than you think I think the current church would uh, call the cops. I, I didn't say people. I didn't say church. I said oh, people. Oh, our, because our folks, yeah, our folks would scoop them up immediately. I'm, I'm just thinking of like a number of just, you know, like homosexual couples that I know that would like 100%. to have kids. And that's why I said 100%. people. I didn't say the church. Right, right. But those, but we're the righteous one. Oh, damn LGBT people. Fuck those people. <laughs> but we're the righteous ones and we're, we're abandoning we're abandoning these girls and then judging them and doing all types of crazy shit. But uh, they're the problem. And then, and then the LGBT couple that will that will adopt those kids and all that other shit. They're evil, but we're the righteous ones that get to judge everybody in America. Get the fuck out of here, bro. Then we'll bomb the shit out of people in Syria and not care, but we're pro-life. Whatever. But anyway, uh, so when I think about those things on the micro level, yeah. Definitely, definitely um, bothers me. But at the macro level, I do believe that we're gonna um, we're gonna figure it out, and then I get happy. So, <clears throat> but yeah, there's if you've ever done that kind of you know if you've ever really gotten to the dirt with people and their stories and things like that, like uh, it's hard, it's hard stuff. But it's actually one of the reasons I'm glad I don't work anymore. Because you just keep hearing these, you know, oh. stories because people will come to the office or whatever. And, you know, people that weren't even my employees would come to the office and tell me all this crazy shit that happened, you know. And then when you help them, like, they're so grateful. Remember that time you got those dishes for those people? Shout out to you guys because you guys were part of that, by the way. This girl had <laughs> nothing for Christmas. Nothing. That was... Abusive boyfriend. Beat the hell out of her, crazy shit, and um, she was working. She was working for somebody who worked for me, and the girl told me her story because she kept being absent. And I said, uh, and then story just took over, and you got her a purple set. You, it was well, so crazy. You got her kids everything the kids wanted, and then you that got was her like one of the funnest things. I can't believe I forgot about that. It was so fun. But I saw these dishes. Yeah. That I was like, oh my gosh, those are so fun. And normally. I want to stick to something kind of basic because if like, let's say you get somebody, I literally got her purple dishes, 
But I'm like, if you get purple dishes and they hate purple, it's like literally the worst. Yeah. And, uh, but I was like, I just saw these purple dishes. I'm like, those are so cool. And I got matching silverware for them. Yeah. But literally it's one of those things that could have been so tacky depending on what you are. But I, I was like, I think this is the right one. And I like was praying about it. Lord, like help me pick the right thing. And then. So anyway, I, that. I, uh, so, so the person who works for me, who, you know, whatever I said, did she, did she got the stuff? She's like, yo, how did you know? I was like, what? She's like, purple's her favorite color. I was like, no shit. So sorry, got all that purple stuff. Purple is your favorite color, and you guys, you guys were a part of that. That was Patreon. That yeah, was, that was Patreon money. Did it. So thank you, Funded guys. Funded by Patreon. Thank you guys for that. Um, so, and and that's why that's why like I'm optimistic about the future. Like we're gonna figure it out. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. So I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty happy. <clears throat> pretty happy about that. So. In Catholic Christian Ireland, there are places where babies were thrown to their deaths for being illegitimate, etc. Not state policy, underhand local practice by the fucking church, I'm sure. Thank you guys for this. Uh, no, thank you. Thank Aww, you, Lori. Thank Boo. you, Lori. <sighs> oh, Ripple the God. Very good. Wow, so Travis goes, religion is a coping method. Uh, Ripple goes, so is trolling. <laughs> Put that thing. Bro. Bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is trolling, you bitch. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Remember Ninth Hydra? Yeah, yeah. We'll say that. We'll tell the kids you said hey. Watch all. Watch all. Yes. Oh my gosh, I gotta go turn that suit off. Yes, I will. Um, is it happening tonight, Larry? Because I wanted to shoot a video for him. What happened? Johan's asking how much longer before you. Uh, well, we got one song review for Ruth, and then we'll do it. And Zoe's waiting up too. Yep. Here you go. Um, uh, Larry, that's that's for uh, that's for your dad. And I will uh, and after after we do this, I'll shoot a video for you for him. So there you go. Yes, I know there's a lot of church-based help for pregnant women. I'm not going to deny that. Um, I'm more talking in the political sphere where we are supposedly pro-life, but we're also against providing the excess social programs that are needed to help a lot of these vulnerable women. As we all know, the vast majority of abortions are called convenience abortions which i really don't like that term but they're basically monetarily motivated and i'm not saying that if we had medicare for all or if we had other you know programs that it would completely eliminate abortion that's why i'm an abolitionist but i am upset about the obvious contradiction between saying that we are pro life while at the same time we know that money is a massive driver of abortion and yet we're not willing to shell out the money necessary to help these girls that's my problem <clears throat> so that's 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 kind of where i'm at with it is this stream about atheists and theists yelling at each other and feeling clever about themselves i don't think so I don't think I don't think it's like that actually. I think uh, I think we're doing pretty good. 
Can you please explain in depth how the groups alliances work in Patreon? I want to join, but can we only be in one group or? Um, well, it's really simple. We actually have a couple of the leaders here. Kalendros is one. Um, you, you, you start at the $1 tier, although, like I said, we, we've got some really cool stuff coming down the pike very, very soon for you guys. But you start at the $1 tier on Patreon, and then you're part of an alliance. Usually what happens is once you get set up, an alliance leader reaches out to you, and then um, you pull your points together, and then there's a song. I don't know if you can see this list, but tomorrow, um, Sori and I have this many reviews to do, to shoot. Yeah, I think you guys can see it now. We've got that many to shoot. Um, so, hence why there's going to be no live stream tomorrow. Um, and um, so, that's going to be a combination of 125s and Patreon pick. Here's Johnny. So, um, that's how it works, Aiden. Um, if you send me an email, vinsorygmail.com, I can, I can hit you up with, um, more, more people that will be able to explain it for you as well. All right. We probably should get yeah. starting. So, so let's, let's do that song. And then, uh, I've got a ride with, is with Johan. I think it, you should do Zoe first. Is the taco bean soup done? Yeah. Everything's been done Ooh, for a while. I've been here. Nobody knows we've been clear. Before the billboards and the Grammy Awards, been Christ homeboy, we've been clear. I ain't never been fake about faith, but I lied to your face, my died disgrace. Live for the truth that he died in my place. Thank God for his sacrifice in his grace. Let's go! <clears throat> All right. I think if a better way was presented to run our society, I don't even think the leaders would let it happen because of how many profit from such a mass quantity. Ripple the God is dropping dimes today. Holy moly, draconian bear. Uh, send me an email. Was that Vince checklist of proof he has for God's existence? <laughs> <laughs> That's so terrible, but also very funny. Jambi's hilarious. <laughs> Look at me, I'm Vin and I have word salad. Shout out to Travis. Mm -hmm. Travis is my guy. Travis, I hope you show up on the next uh, live stream. Word salad, <laughs> he says. All right, babe. The children. Living the together children. Fulfill, the commission he handed us. London to Los Angeles. Rap evangelist. My daddy wouldn't abandon us. I got a backpack full of tracks and I keep a Johnny Max. Are you ready to come hang with like, us? Let's go. Give it a really word. Let's awesome go. Persecution. Snacks. Let's go. Huh? I said, plus I have some really awesome fruit snacks. Let's go. <laughs> uh, here's Zonia. I got to take my friend to the abortion clinic. I got to drop you off. You guys have a fun stream and take care. Zonia, I continue to pray for you, sis. Very frequently, because God brings you to my mind very frequently. Much love. Much love to you. <clears throat> River Roth in the house. <laughs> Vin Jay-Z. That wasn't even me, bitch. That was Lecrae. It's your bitch ass. Plus, I happily admit Jay-Z is better than me. What's up, Ryan? Much better rapper than me. Not Tupac, though. I'm better than Tupac. Buy a mile! All right, hold on. I gotta do this song. Mm, my mind okay, is honey. Complete mush right now. I know, I know, I know. But uh, mortify the flesh. All right, do me a favor. Take that and put it in in uh, your YouTube browser, please. James is tired. Just seeing if you got my messages on pay. Hey, sorry. Are you getting James's stuff? You know who this is, right? That's uh, that's my guy. That's my guy. That's Gibsy. Oh, I did. I'm Sing, Singh, Mister Singh. Mr. Lion, I am a fan of you, sir. <laughs> when I was a teenager, I never thought I'd grow up to be the type of person who hates teenagers, but here we are. <laughs> People are like on point today, I swear to God. They are on point today. Okay, did you put that in the thing? Honey, take that, that, that clip from YouTube and put it in a browser. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sorry. I'm so distracted by your story. I know. I know. But we got we to gotta bring it together. I'm sorry. Well, I'm gonna have to go I know, but I didn't have a face with the story before. Right. Oh, you didn't know it was her? Mm -mm. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was her. 
I could have sworn. Oh, yeah, I always called her A. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And like context is important. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Word salad. The only thing the Bible is good for is rolling papers for weed. <laughs> Rolling ganja with Bible paper. Ha ha, the lock could take us to the eyes of Christ. Join Elijah Jacob. See, there's rhymes for everything, bro. There's rhymes for everything. I can do this all night, my G. I don't know what I'm doing right now. Do you want me to get the, the lyrics up? Is that what I'm supposed I to do? I want doing? you to get the exact song I'm supposed to do. Yeah, take up PayPal or I can send it to you. What do you want me to do? She, she sent it on PayPal. Yeah. I just want to make sure I got the right one. We're about to listen to a song, ladies and gentlemen. Is this? Is this what? Uh, Black Satan 68? 68, right? Was it 68? That's her. That's her. Yeah. She's here, right? Where's she at? Is she? 68. I'm not sure if the person that... It's Ruth. Did... Yeah, I know. But was she the one that we, we said she, she had a Middle America shirt? And... Yes. Yes. Oh shit, you were born in 68. I know. She you're like, aging very she well. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky she's, lady. She's got some melon in her. She's got some <laughs> melon in her. All right, ready? Well, is that the song right there? No, and I don't know. I'm so sorry. I thought you were pulling it up over there. Hey, uh um She can't put a link in there. It's right here. The link is right here. What do you want me to do? Do you want me to put it over here so you can Okay, I see it. I see it. I see it. I see it. Okay. Um, That's what I'm saying. Go to PayPal. Unless we do it this way. Yeah, and then... I, I just want to make sure that our audio issues are taken this is, care of. This is the... Yeah, hold on. All right, guys. We're going to do a test on the audio issues. Okay? Actually, no. We don't need to do that because I'll just download it. Never mind. Never mind. Can you check the chat to see if she's still there? See, this is the official video. You think oh. we should do the official video? I mean, that's what she's asking for. So we just do it and then... It gets blocked. I hope it doesn't get blocked. Then you just say silence it. So then... Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's for her. It's all good. We'll do it. Can you check the chat though? Is she even there? Uh. Are you still here? What what was it? Black uh oh, Black, Black Girls Satan six 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 or whatever. Black Satan. Black Satan sixty eight. She hasn't said anything for a while. <laughs> she gone now. Ah, she gone. Did she leave? Black Satan, speak to us. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say hey, that. Hey, Mister Singh, <laughs> Mister Singh is saying hello to you. What's up? What's up? Uh, Allah and Jesus were related. I agree. Allah is Jesus' father. Should I message uh, her separately? Yeah, message her separately. Ask her if she's still around. Do unto others as they've done unto you. But what the hell is this world coming to? Oh, duh. You to, are you talking to the chat? I'm looking in the chat right now, looking for Shorty. We talked too long. I feel so bad. It's too late. Well, just refund her then. Yeah, I know. And I know. then she can hop on another you, one of them. Did you? Did you? Uh, you talk to her? Um, I thought it was under our Venezuela at gmail dot com email, but I don't actually. I typed her name here, and I'm not seeing anything. You know what? Why don't? Since we know her real name, just go in here and type in her real name. There she is right there. Oh, there we go. Yeah. And I'm just going to call her. <laughs> She's like, I'm in bed. <laughs> I know. What time? Holy shit, it's 1130. Yeah. Hey, Ruth, this is Vin. Are you still in the... Are, are you still in the are you still in the stream? We were about to do your song. And I felt bad because 
yeah, I felt bad because we I promised you that we would do the song right now. If you sent it, then you did it. And then I would talk for a while and then whatever. So um, what do you want to do? Because like we can do the reaction right now. I can refund you. I can. What do you want to do? I mean, you don't have to log in if you don't want to. I mean, we're gonna post. I'll, I'll, we're gonna post. We're gonna do the reaction and then post it immediately tonight. Um, so you don't. You don't have to be here. I just. Or we could refund it, and she can do it the next time we're on a live. I mean, what, what do you want to just to to, to tell us? Tell me what you want to do, and I'll, we'll do it. Okay, so we're gonna do it now, and then I'll 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 hit you up. Uh, as soon as it's posted so you can see it, okay? Cool? Of course. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you see how uh, Sori has such a dirty mind. So she's like, oh, 68, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you see, please. That wasn't the only one. You see what I have to deal with with this woman. You could say dirty, or you could say fun. It's a dirty brain. Or fun. Of course. It just depends on where you are on the spectrum of fun. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Do how can I buy Dethroner X? I know. What about a comedy movie? Uh, what? Holy shit. What happened? What? Yeah, CBGB's in New York on 14th Street. <laughs> In the village. I Holy know Amy, shit. Lee, Amy Lee forever. Um, I was, shit, I was seeing York. that too. Uh, you remember, you, you remember the station K-Rock, right? Uh, remember they used to do the Lodo shows? It was, you go and it's $1 and then you go see all these bands. It's pretty crazy. What's oh. up? Feed the monster. Okay. Oh, that sounds like what happens when I have to feed my little boy. He's two. That's crazy. Okay. Um, now, do you care if we do the um, the official video or whatever? Because you know if it's official, it might get blocked. So do you care if we do the official or do you want us to do the lyric video? Or we could do the official. It's okay. 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 <laughs> yeah. All right, Ma. We're going to be on it right now. River. Uh, Sorry, I don't know. All right, cool. Peace out. I'll let you know when it's up. Peace. Uh, River, I'm planning on waking up early tomorrow to work on Patreon. So I'll probably, I respond to every Patreon message that I get. So if I haven't responded to the message, that means I haven't either, I probably haven't opened it yet. So. Yeah. Well, like, unless it's like, there's no reason to respond to that. That's when I don't, but. Okay. Ready? All right, guys. Uh, having said that, we are going to bid you adieu. We've been together for three hours, 27 minutes, and 27 seconds. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. Shout out to BC. Shout out for Travis. If you are a praying person, please, play, please pray for Travis. And um, much love to everybody. Thank you guys very freaking much. Can you update us? Because last we knew you were doing, you were shooting this song reaction. We are right after we hang up this. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. If she was here, then we would do it live, and then we'd have to cut the video for everybody else. Now we can kill it and do it. Mm -hmm. Have a good night, breeder. Pray to the sky fairy. I will pray to the sky. Perkinos, you make sure you pray for Travis as well. Also pray for Ben. <laughs> Pray for Ben that Sori doesn't ban his ass. Well, he banned himself after I said that. You didn't hear another peep from him all night. Oh, that's right. Oh, I think that's right. He fled because of you. 
You hurt his feelings. You shouldn't have done You need to reach out to no, him. No, what he said was wrong. No, I'm serious. You need to reach out to mm. him. What he said was wrong. Message him. He's going to have some nice lines. Message him. Tell him you, you, you know he didn't mean anything by it. He just needs to, you know, chill out. Don't hurt my Ben. Message him. Message him all you want. You need to. Tell him he can mock all the black people that have gotten killed on the street. Go ahead if you want to do that. I'm not doing mocking that. all the black people. He was mocking my brother for being, you know, whatever. Having fun killing black people, he said. <sighs> nice try, baby. Uh, Travis, Travis, uh, I'm glad you'll be back tomorrow, buddy. But um, uh, but we won't be live. We're going to be doing a recording <laughs> marathon. <laughs> Later, Will. Thanks, buddy. Much love to you. <laughs> Sorry, in the mood to fuck shit up. <laughs> you guys are terrible. Terrible, terrible. Would you... Vin out. Sorry out. Gone.